Good morning on this lovely Monday morning and welcome to Sewing Street. It's not raining, a little bit chilly, but nice Monday morning. Otherwise, I'm just playing with all my boxes. We've got a fantastic early bird for you today. Got lots of them here. I've just been unwrapping them all and seeing what they do. They're fantastic. This is a brilliant early bird. It is... I don't think we've ever had a saving this big before on an early bird. It's one of our biggest ever, if not the biggest. It is a 30, not 13, 33 zero pounds saving for this beautiful set of storage boxes. Now, this isn't just any old storage boxes. This is real quality storage boxes. I'm going to show you. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six storage boxes in this set. So should we start with the big one? So these storage boxes, you can store whatever you like in them. I mean, you're obviously sewing related things, yarn related things, um, kitchen related things, whatever you like, really. There are two that are a bit more specific, but everything else is generic. Now, what's great about these is they've got these really thick, so quality thick elastic loops. So you know that they're held tight. So if you wanted to put your sandwiches in one, you'd know they stay. But really, they're for sewing storage. So the biggest one... It's got a lid that clips on really nicely and the elastic things. They've all, all branded, they're all simplicity make, so you know that they're quality. They're not just any sort of generic. So the biggest one, you've got three sections in. They're made from this really good, sturdy, quality perspex. So, so we've worked out that makes every box £6.65 for each box. But that's amazing. So, but you, you know normally for a large box like this you would pay a lot more for something this size so in in the big box you could put whatever you like I mean you could fit in um, you know if you rolled up fat quarters you could put it you could put all your ribbons and your buttons and thread all different sorts this sections as well they do come out so if you want if you only want like two or you don't want any or you want to put your sandwiches in one and your drink in the other yeah, you could use it as a project box as well. So if you were making a quilt or something and you wanted to put um, the items that you were doing for that project, it'd be much easier. You could put all your sort of needles and thread in one side, the fabric you're doing in another. Perfect if you were doing something in front of the TV, like some EPP, you could use it for that. Oh, we've got a message from Sue saying, I can't believe it's a £30 saving. Well, it is. £30 savings, fantastic. And what's nice about it is that you know, because they're simplicity, they're quality. I love the elastic straps on them as well. Could even use them as handles. So the next size I'm going to show you, because that one's more thread, is this rectangular one. Again, it features the elastic strap, nice clip lid. This has just got the one compartment in it. So, you know, you could think, right, well, I'm going to store my zips in this one. So if you want to really get, I mean, it's January, isn't it? If you want to get all your sewing supplies, all sorted and stored and organized this is the perfect time and as well they've all got a lip on them so once you filled them up and you've put the lid back on they actually fit in and they stay so say you've got a set of shelves and you know you want to vertical store rather than horizontal to get the best use of space they all sit in together um, we've then got this size so I'm going to just show you the ones that are less specific the empty one the empty ones that one, perfect for buttons. Or you know when you've got all those bag fastenings and you've got um, split rings, D rings, you've got the um, sliders, all that stuff, be perfect for something like that to put them all in, all buttons. Because what I always find is if I don't organise it, I, I'd end up buying them in again and I've actually got quite a lot of um, D rings now because I can't find them. But because they're clear, really easy to see. So again, look, it will stack. Um, then we've got a little one that's half the size of that. So that's perfect. Hooks, hook and loop um, fastenings, just anything sort of really small that you want to put in there. I mean, again, ideal for um, buttons, but you know, maybe you do an EPP, it'd be great for all the little hexes. You could use it to put the paper pieces or the fabric, all the bit, the ones you've already done. So maybe you could put your sort of supplies in there and your finished makes in there. So that's the little one. Again, they are designed, as you can see. So look, well, that fits there and that fits there. Now this one is more specific. Um, I've put some thread in this, but you don't get the thread, just in case you're wondering. Again, you get the elastic loops, and this will fit 
specially made it will fit the larger spools and what i like about it is they've designed it so there's a space at the end can you see and you could put the bobbins in here that match the threads which is really useful isn't it so you can get lots of thread in here but you can keep it you can see it maybe you put the sort of specific colors that you use the most in there or um you know you put the bright ones in there the neutral ones again it clips and it holds it really safe so if you've got all your bobbins in there they're not going to start moving to other compartments um, and then this one i like this one this one's a pin cushion so look so if we were going to sell this at full price it would be almost 70 pounds so that you know you really are getting the saving this one has got foam inside it so you can put your pins in it put your pins in there but if you don't want to it does come out if you want to if you want to use it as a, just a storage but it's really useful for putting pins in or anything that you want to keep safe maybe you've got specific jewelry findings that are really small and you want to keep them protected they'd be good for that maybe you're taking your sewing away for you you're traveling somewhere one day you're going on holiday with it this will all keep it safe because it doesn't matter how you travel with it it will be safe it's amazing saving, isn't it? Now, this is only available with our early birds, so only today, between now and midnight, and after that, it will go up in price. But they are all made, so this stack, look, that one goes there. This is, um, this is tessellates beautifully, doesn't it? So it's, the nice thing about it is it's not just all random things. It's all designed, you know, by simplest to other simplest, which is why it all fits. So that one goes in there. You can put them there. Look at that. Hi, Rebecca. I tried buying some of these over the weekend. Couldn't find anyone with stock in. You must have bought them all. Great deal. Ordered mine. Fantastic. Because they is a great deal. And look how well they fit. So if you really like them and you really want to get your sewing room organised, and if you're like me and you've got masses of stuff, then buy two sets. Because basically, because they're £30 off, you're almost getting them one for free, nearly. But you know how, um, if you haven't shopped with us before, or um, you don't know how it works, we only have one postage and packing charge. It's 3 95 per day. So whatever you buy between now and midnight, and whether you buy it on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane or both, it is only one P&P. So if you put this in your basket now, you're saving your P&P, then anything else you buy during the day, then you'll have almost free P&P. But remember, it's only yours when you check out. A bit like going around the supermarket, if it's in your basket, someone could take it out. So it's only yours when you check out. Now, these are flying out, which is not surprising. So if you do want them, I would check out quite quickly to be sure that they're yours. But it's nice, isn't it? You know, when you, in the new year, you sort of go through your sewing room or your small area that you use for your sewing and to be able to have all of this and get it all sorted and be able to see it. So at a glance, but it's lovely, isn't it? It's kind of, it's very calming, isn't it? Very cathartic to have things organised, to be able to see where everything is. The fact that you can see at a glance where everything is and you know it's safe as well because it's all held really tightly. I think it's a really good way, because a lot of storage containers, they have funny clips and things, and you open them up and everything falls out. But it's designed so well that the um, where the elastic goes, there's a slight indent, so that the elastic therefore sits flush. So when you therefore stack them, because of the bottom of it, the elastic doesn't sit above the bottom of the box. It sits in this very slight indent, then it actually will sit flat on the box. Because it is difficult to open some of the clip ones. and it, I mean, you do want them held tight. So the, the ones that have all the clips around, that is nice. But they're not as easy to open, are they? But it is very... I mean, they've really thought it through, the fact that it sits flush. Because normally you'd think, oh, I've got elastic around that. It's all going to wobble about. But it's, um, it's a good, thick, good quality elastic. And they're really attractive, aren't they? I like the fact that they've sort of really thought it through. They've made them clear, obviously, because you need to see... Um, a nice sort of a frosted, smoky um, lid. And then the bright red elastic. They're just quite stylish. Got another email. Another email from Jane. Jane says she's got the pincushion one of these, which is this one. And she found it really useful, but she's going to get the bundle. I like the pincushion one, but I like the way they've thought it through, that if you don't want to have that, you can take it out. Or if you're, you keep your pins in there, but you want to sort of put it by your machine, you can put it in there. But it's got the height, hasn't it? 
So you could use it to store your needles as well. But you know, you don't have to use them for sewing storage. You could use them from all sorts of things. You could use them in the kitchen. You could put all lots of different sort of spices and herbs and, and different things in them. I mean, they're not designed for food, but obviously you can use them for things like in the bathroom, you could use them. You could put cotton buds or cotton wool balls in some of them. You could put toiletries in them. So, you know, if you buy the pack and you think, well, I'm going to use the four little ones in my sewing room, but the bigger one I want to use in my bathroom, that's fine because you get all of them. So I think the difficulty would be is deciding what to put in them. But if you want to get on with some super storage, then buy two bundles because they are um, fantastic value, aren't they lovely? I like the way they all stack as well. But they are, I mean, we will have them available all day until they sell out and they are going fast. So if you want them, then put them in your basket. Quarter of the, bar the stock has already been checked out with loads more in baskets as well. So, you know, for 30 pound saving, it really is worth, really worth thinking about to going for. I really like these. I quite like these. Um, there are a lot of you who are buying more than one bundle, which I totally understand because, you know, if you think you've got a shelf, you could, you know, on a normal shelf, you could get two sets of these. And the fact that they're vertical as well, if you had two sets, you know, be up to about here, but it, it would save so much space. So all those sort of bags and packets and stuff you've got all just shoved on a shelf or put in a cardboard box, you could keep them. But, you know, if you're into knitting and crochet instead, you could keep hanks or skeins of yarn in here, the special ones. You could keep embroidery threads. You know all those metallic threads that get all jumbled up? The, um, the one that we've got thread in would be perfect, let me show you, for crochet hooks because of the little um, compartments. You could put all of your crochet hooks in here. Or, again, ideal for skeins of stranded cotton, but I would use them specifically for metallic threads because I find that once they start moving around, because they're quite springy, they get really tangled and twisted up. So this would be ideal for threads. Or if you've got some more expensive hand-dyed silk threads that you want to keep really safe and clean, be perfect for that. So it could be um, sewing thread or it could be embroidery threads or crochet hooks. It's your storage. You can do what you like with it. It's lovely. Anyway, I hope you are successful. Well done if you've already managed to check out because they are going fast. So let's talk about what a nice way to start the show on a Monday morning after some really cold days. Maybe it's warming up a bit and we give you a special treat as well. So um, coming up on the show today, we've got some great things. We have got the lovely Sally Ann Harrison is we're waiting with me now is about to come on air to show us her brand new Liberty Chain needle case. It's a beautiful, beautiful design where you're really going to learn a new technique. If you've ever tried cathedral windows and you like the idea, you're going to love this. It's a bit of a twist on it, but it makes the most the prettiest design. So um, Sally's going to be showing us how to bend her needle case. Um, nine o'clock, we've got make your own face covering. So um, obviously we're going to be wearing face coverings for a while. Um, we have sold the panels in the past to make them and I asked them because they said, oh, will you um, show them how to make them? I said, yes, but can we have a new panel? Because I feel spring may be coming one day. So we've got a brand new panel. We've got the four that we've done originally. So we've got five different choices. Uh, we've got a spring flowers one today. 10 o'clock, Sally Ann's back with us. Another new design, Japanese origami flower cushion. It's lovely, but it's a really, it's using the similar technique to the Liberty Chain needle case, but there's lots of different things you can do with it. Sally Ann's going to show us how to make a cushion, but you can make it into a bag as well, all, all different sorts of things. You'll enjoy that. That's a real learn, learn lots show. 11 o'clock sewing room tools, particularly concentrating on a is one of my favourite things. So we've got lots of tools and books and equipment to use for a plico, it's brilliant. 12 o'clock, we've got Yarn Lane, which I am really looking forward to. We've got a brand new guest on today, Emma Price from um, In The Wool Shed, who creates all of her own hand-dyed yarn using natural dyes in her wool shed. And she's got um, five beautiful kits and she's going to show us the whole dyeing process as well so um, stay around for Yarn Lane at 12 o'clock because it's you are going to love that show. Anyway so today's show we are going to, sh um, Sally Ann's going to show us how to make this beautiful needle case. Isn't that lovely? It's really clever isn't it? It's like tiny little windows showing beautiful 
beautiful bits of liberty, little pops of liberty. But it's a lovely technique. I think you're really going to enjoy this. So, um, and that's the inside of it. So I'm going to, before we... Um, Ask Sally Ann to come on air. I'm going to show you the three different bundles that you can choose to make this beautiful kit. So the first one we're going to show you, this one here. So in this bundle, in my glasses, this we have got three different fabrics. We've got the plain fabric. Now that's which is a pale pink, half a meter of that. Oh no, no, it's a fat quarter. Sorry, sorry, a fat quarter of the. It's a really pretty, pretty pastel pink, which is more than enough. This is using to make the outside of the needle case. And you've got loads here. Um, we've then got fat quarter, two Liberty fat quarters. So um, in the image that we just showed you a minute ago, the, the original needle case that Sally Ann made, she's got lots and lots of different Liberties that you um, join together in patchwork to create lots of different windows we're giving you in this bundle two fat quarter liberty which is more than enough to create the needle case but the great thing is is that you can also use fabrics from your stash if you want to have different pops of color or different prints or patterns in your windows but you've got enough here to make more than one needle case and also a beautiful pure wool felt you've got half a meter it's massive it's like Half a metre, that's just half of it. So what's great about this, we have given you loads. I mean, this is just used for the pages of the needle case. But I know that a lot of you find it really hard to find pure wool felt. You often use the nylon. There's a massive difference to working with pure wool felt in comparison to the nylon felt. And you've got loads here. So maybe you like bondweb or applique, or you want to make um, cushions from felt. I mean, it's particularly good for applique because it doesn't fray. And, it, and because it's pure wool, it feels very different. It's very different to sew with. And you are going to have masses left over. So this is a really good way of adding some good quality felt. Um, you could use it for EPP. You know the technique when you cut the hexagons out, but you actually, and you do EPP in the, way, the same way, but instead of using card, you use felt and you keep it in there. So it gives it that padded appearance. You've got lots here to play with. And it's a, in a really lovely sort of rich, like a, pale makes me think of homemade custard that really sort of pale custard look and more importantly than all the fabric is in the kit you get sally ann's instructions these are written by her photographed by her got everything you need to know lovely really clear all the measurements very clear what photos of every single step so it shows here for example how you can create a patchwork effect if you want different fabrics in each window Everything is really easy to understand. It's all told you how it works, all the um, sizes, all the measurements, everything you need. And then it shows you how to make up the needle case. So it's not just the technique you're learning, but you're also learning how to make the needle case as well. Everything you need to know is in there. That's and once you've got the kit, you can make more than one needle case, but you could also use that technique, because it's all explained in there, to make other items, more needle cases, you can make a matching um, sewing pouch with it. Once you've used this to, to make the needle case with the fabric in your bundle, then you've got the instructions forever. You can make lots of different things. So bundle number two is this one. Again, Liberty. Again, you get the plain fabric that's used for the outer portion of the needle case. This one is the most popular on pre-order. This is, what's this one called? Liberty Hesketh House Green green chain so with this one you get the fat quarter of the blue plain blue fabric it's 100 percent cotton really nice quality fabric and then two fat quarters of this beautiful liberty i love that one it is from the hesketh house collection which is is a lovely collection of liberty inspired by um the art nouveau period and fabrics and interior um like wallpaper and decor from Hesketh House itself and then you've got the other fat quarter which is the blue version of it really soft soft pretty colors I mean just you know Liberty speaks for itself doesn't it you know what sort of prints and colors you are going to expect from it and they imagine what they will look like with a little pop of blue 
because the blue will sit on top of it. And again, you get half a metre felt for the pages and loads more besides. So this one is the most popular so far, but it is really lovely. And I love Liberty fabric, it's so soft. Just really soft. This isn't. This is your sort of quilting weight, Liberty. It's not the normal what you think of Liberty as the Tana lawn. This is proper quilting weight. You need that for this. Um, well, you could use any fabric for the underneath, but the quilting weight works particularly well with this technique. And then the blue, and then the final. We have three bundles. This is the final one. <laughs> so the plain fabric that goes on the outside is this lovely shade of. Um, pale lilac and then the two and there's a fat quart of that and then the two liberty fabrics that go underneath it for the that show through the windows are the lovely I wonder what, what is that one because it doesn't say on the selvage of that one sometimes they give you the name if you've got the selvage depends where the fat quart has been cut it's on the other side but you've got this one this is a lovely sort of trailing vine design of a very sort of soft smoky gray and then you've got the teal blue but then when you put the um, the mauve on the lilac on top they go really well together that's so pretty isn't it so pretty and the half a meter felt and don't forget you get the full instructions with each kit and this teaches you a technique and teaches you how to make a needle case so there is so much in here and honestly the instructions are really good really really easy to follow now a quarter of the stock of this one has already gone so if you do want it you need to check out very, very quickly. Right, also, because obviously um, this is a needle case and you need to be filling it with needles. So we have also got a needle bundle for you. Let me just get that off the side of the desk. We've got loads of different needles here. So you get nine packets of needles here. All the needles you will ever need. So <laughs> needles you will ever need, ever. Well, th th I can't guarantee that. They're all the needles I'd ever need. So these are the ones that you will actually get. And these are pretty, I mean, there are other, there are other hand sewing needles, but these cover pretty much everything you'll need. So I'm going to go in alphabetical order. So we start with beading needles, very long, very fine, perfect for sewing on seed beads. Then we get between quilting needles. These are obviously short and strong with um, a nice round eye, perfect for hand quilting. Then you get chenille needles. These are exactly the same as a tapestry needle, only they have a sharp point. So these are perfect for embroidering or sewing with slightly thicker threads. Um, or if you're sewing with wool, they're really good for that. But if you're using um, more than, say, four skeins of stranded cotton, a chenille needle is perfect. Then we move on to the embroidery cruel needles. Obviously, this is your go-to standard embroidery needle. Very fine, very sharp, with a nice elongated round eye so that you can get quite a lot of thread in there, but it will slip through the fabric well. Then we move on to the leather needles. These are great needles. If you're hand sewing with not just leather, but any non-woven fabric like PU, oil cloth anything like that they have a chiseled point not a sharp point but a chisel point so they'll actually cut and make a little hole in so, and, and if you've tried sewing with any of these thick and non-woven fabrics nothing else works as well as a leather needle so it's really worth having as part of your sewing armory the next one is the milliner's straw needles these are very long very long and very fine. So obviously originally they were used for sewing hats and particularly straw. These days they're perfect. If you're doing things like bullion knots or French knots or anything where you've got a longer stitch, they're perfect for that um, because they have got that extra length. Or if you, because they're quite long, if you're sewing something where you need to sew the eyes onto something and you need a needle that's just a little bit longer, these are perfect for that. Um, long darn is the next one. Obviously they are, as they say on the packet, originally used for darning and they are extra long needles. But they're really good if you've got um, long stitches to make or you've got to get through a big space of maybe you're sewing arms onto a teddy bear or eyes on something. They are perfect for that. Sharps, they are your absolute go-to needles. They use for all general hand sewing, hems, seams, anything that you're sewing buttons on. They are very sharp. They have nice small eyes. So... For just general dressmaking purposes, they're perfect. And finally, tapestry needles. So they've got large eyes, blunt points. They're used for cross-stitch. They're used for threading things through. I use them if I want to um, 
thread a very th narrow elastic through a casing because they've got a nice blunt end. So in this nine pack of needles, it's everything you need. There are other needles around, but really this covers pretty much all you need. I do loads and loads of hand sewing and I don't use any other needles than uh, in this pack. So I would really recommend that you buy those. And they'll fill your needle case once you've made it, which is very important because you don't want to be putting random needles that you don't know what they are. You want to put nice, new, shiny needles because just like sewing machine needles, once they go slightly blunt and they get a bit rough, you need to replace them. And actually, hand sewn needles don't always last as long because the grease from your hands is getting them all the time, which tarnishes them. So do use a new pack of needles. So before we go over to Sally Ann, so I just want to recap this bundle that's got the blue in it. So remember, in this pack, I'm just recapping it because over half of this is checked out and I wanted to make sure that you had the chance to buy it before we go through the tutorial. So in this one, you get a fat quarter of the um, plain blue. It's like a cornflower blue. You get a fat quarter of this lovely Liberty with um, very sort of sagey green leaves and peach coloured flowers and then a fat quarter of the same print but with a like an ocean blue and a more like a tealy blue flower and half a metre of the felt and of course the full instructions. There is more than enough in this bundle to make more than one needle case but I just wanted to make sure that you that there are less than 20 of these left so if you do want this bundle you need to check out. Right, that's all the admin done. So, good morning, Sally Ann. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good, thank you. Um, so, tell me, where was your inspiration? Why did you decide to do? Where did you start with this needle case? Pinterest. Pinterest. I love Pinterest. Browsing Pinterest. My favourite. Saw some folded patchwork and thought, mm. Mm, is that really going to work? Okay. So it was like a little bit experimental. Right. And I was amazed that it worked so well. Um, basically, I thought it was going to be difficult to actually pull back the little windows. Yeah. But no, it wants to do it because it's cut on the bias. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how did it take a while to sort of get it, work it all out? Playing with it for a couple of days right. on and off. Yeah. Um, so obviously you've got the feature front with all the little windows in. Mm. Um, and inside you've just got a couple of, which is your cream, which you talked about being custard. It, it, well, it makes me think of homemade custard, yeah, that does. really sort of lovely yeah. pale cream. Um, and then it's just quilted all the way through. So I like the way you've bound the pages. Yeah. Because you don't need to. No, it's, it's afraid, just a little it detail. It does look nice. little detail that goes in there. And then does it say all that in the instructions about? Yes, oh. yeah, binding the pages. Um, and I've, I've attached a little button and ribbon, but you could attach whatever you wanted. You could put like a press stud if you wanted. Oh, okay. Or, yeah, there's... But it's a really nice way of showcasing the technique, isn't it? So you can just learn in a small area and yep. then you can use that to create much bigger things. Exactly. You could blow it up to make a cushion, like you said. Mm. Yeah. Um, and also you can, as we'll see later on when I do the, the cushion, you could do it in felt as well. OK. So you, instead of doing the, the, um, the flower, you mm. could do the actual needle case design, the chains. On in, that in instead. Film. Yeah, as a cushion. It is. It's so pretty, isn't it? And it, lo it looks really clever. Yeah. And I've also played with it on the diagonal as well. Mm. It looks great on the diagonal. Okay. Yeah. So going across rather than... Yeah. So you, you, we'll see that as we sort of go along. But I guess once you've got the instructions and you've learned the technique, you could then play with it as well and create your own designs. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nice. So where do we start then? Okay, so I actually started with building the front. And as you say, I built my front out of little scraps of Liberty. Mm. So I've got lots of different windows. Um, with different prints in each window, but you could use strips um, okay. or you could use squares, which is what I've done So here. you could cut the fabrics in your bundle into squares and join them together? Yeah. Or just use one piece? Or, or one piece, like I've done. Right. Um, or, or, you know, rows, or it's, it's entirely up to you. Okay. You could alternate, because you've got two colours, haven't you? You could alternate one all the way across. Two different fabrics. So have you got interfacing on there? Yes. I have a little bit of interface. So you're using, all oh right, so you're using the bundle that's got the pale pink in it. Yes. In your demo. Yes. So what, what I've done to replicate that piece mm. is I've cut myself a, I think it's a five and a half inch square. Right. I've drawn some lines on it to replicate where the seams would be. And I've also drawn some lines on the back. And I've stabilised it with a bit of, what do you call it? Just stabiliser, was it? 
Vis is it just like a Vis medium weight interfacing? Yeah. Is it called Vaseline? I can. I never can say the word. Vaseline, but Vis that's the make. Is it? Oh, right. Okay. Vaseline. <laughs> well, it used to be called Vileen. Yeah. And then it joined with somebody else, and then it became Vaseline. Oh well, no wonder I got lost then, because I always used to call it Vileen. It was Vileen, but then they joined with somebody else, and I can't remember what they were called. And then they became Vaseline. Wow. It took me ages to be able to say that. <laughs> But basically, it's a medium weight iron on interfacing. Yes. yes. So, um, to start, you've got your five and a half inch square. The next thing you need to do is start cutting strips from your. your you know, oh, from the, from the plain pink, fabric. Yeah, from the plain fabric. And does that have to be cut on the bias yeah, then? Yes, so that's cut on the bias deliberately because that is what allows you to bend the windows. Right. Does okay. it work if you cut it straight? No. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, that's no, but that's good to know, isn't it? Yeah. Because you might get some people going, oh, I'm not doing that on the bias. I'll so, cut it straight so it doesn't work. I don't know if it, oh yeah, the iron is on. So I've started, I've made a few of these strips. So these are two inch wide bias strips. And basically you're just going to fold them into the middle. So what you do is you overlay these strips onto your, either your pieced background or your feature fabric. Mm. So I'm just going to fold it then in towards the fold. So you want to get, you want to do it as accurately as possible. So you're aiming to get oh, the so raw you're edge. making bias binding them. Yeah. Yes, you are. So you could use one of those bias binding makers to do it. Possibly, yes. You Although could I don't know whether you've got to get them exactly the right size, though, haven't you? Do you know you? I've got one of those and I've never got it out of the box. Oh well, I would say <laughs> that I would say that I've n never used to use them because they look like really small, cheap things, and I've always presumed they're rubbish as a result. But honestly, I think about three months ago I thought I'm going to have a go of it, and they are just life changing. Was it no going back? Was never. it because you just put your strip of fabric through, and then you pull it out the other end with your iron, and it does all of that. So did you make straight grain or bias or have you tried both? I've tried both. Ooh. But the thing is, they obviously only come in certain widths. So it depends on the width. You can get like half inch ones, one inch ones. But they're just amazing because you just thread it through. And then as you pull, you pull it out, you press it as it pulls out. And it does all of that for you. Ooh. But they might not come in the width that you're doing. So this is um, one inch now. With the edges folded okay, in there. Okay, so no, they do. And I've, but like you, I you had one for a long time and never used it. You know, you sort of sit. Mm. I don't know about you. You get excited about a project yeah. and you're getting towards the end, and then obviously usually the bias is like that, or the yeah. binding is the, is the last bit, and you get so excited, you think, "Am I going to go upstairs, find the box, get it out, I read know, the instructions, I I or am I just going to yeah. go for it?" Well, I decided one day I'm going to have a go with this because people, I saw people use them, thinking, oh, "I don't, I don't know what all this fuss is about," but they are brilliant. Okay, you've encouraged me out of the box this afternoon. Yes, well, they are. If you want a bias binding maker, they are on our website. Okay. <laughs> so you need to cut the strips to about seven. This is intentionally too long, so seven inches. So that is approximately here. Let's make sure we're all the same. Okay. So you want six of these. So I guess it's better to fold them and then cut them afterwards. Yes, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is start somewhere in the middle and try and line up the centre crease on the line, one of the lines. Okay, so either on the, your seam line or... Yes, on your seam line or, in my case, on your felt-tip pen line. I'll tell you what I did yesterday when I was prepping this is I put all the lines on and then I owned it. Oh, that's with, with so a Frickson annoying. pen and they all disappeared. Oh. Look at it. What have they gone? <laughs> I did that with an embroidery transfer. I traced a whole embroidery design on and then I thought, I'm just going to get a quick press before I embroider it and they all disappeared. Funnily enough. Just a number of times. Okay, so then you're going to line it up <laughs> and you're going to sew with a straight stitch. Down that centre crease. Oh, so not down the edges then? Just down no, the just on the centre crease. Oh. Right. Okay. 
the first one in place and then you you I work from the first one going across so, so that you they cover to, up they the butt up next to each they other they butt up hard against each other so I'm just putting a few pins in at home I would probably take a little bit more pains of getting them straight I'm flying by the seat of my pants this morning so <laughs> I'm going to get this done Oh, well, I know, it's, busy. it's nice to be able to see the whole technique as yeah. well. So the bundle that Sally Ann's working with is the one that's on screen at the moment that's called the Liberty Bouquet Chain. That's the one she's working with, and over the half of the stock of that one has gone as well. So do check out if you want it. I like the... The pink that's the background, well, not the background colour, the outer colour, because it's very pale, isn't it? It's really pretty. It picks up the, um, the pink in the Liberty Prince beneath. So you're totally covering that piece of feature fabric. It's, gonna be, it's funny because it has looks like cathedral windows. It's the same sort of effect, but it's constructed in a completely different way. Yeah. I thought there would be like a similarity, but it's not at all, is it? No, it, there was quite a bit of discussion about it on Facebook at one point as to whether it was cathedral windows and somebody wrote to me and said, I don't think it's cathedral windows, I think it's just a type of folded patchwork. So, Well, <laughs> but then isn't that what cathedral windows yeah, is? Yeah, exactly. A type of cathedral. Yeah, it's just, it just gives that sort of effect, doesn't it, where you reveal the fabric beneath. So if you're at home, you might want to draw like a centre line. I mean, I'm just yeah. going on the crease, but obviously that's a little bit... For, yes, for yeah. real accuracy, yeah. if you drew that on yeah. with a friction pen, then... Yeah, with a friction pen, because you know it's going to come yeah, off. because it will come <laughs> off. But even a very fine pencil is fine, isn't it? Yeah. Can, but don't do it too dark. Add a couple of extra lines to the back of this. So I'm just using a friction on the back because I was missing a couple of seam lines. So if you've already joined it all in squares, every, all of that will be there? Yeah. But it might be worth, if you wanted to practice it first, you could just do it with one piece of fabric to get yeah. your head around it. So I'm going to turn it over and do it this way so I can see the lines. So what, which way are you sewing it now? I'm sewing it in the opposite direction, effectively making a grid. Oh, okay. So you sew all of the strips on down One the centre and then yeah. from the other side you sew the grid. Yeah, you don't have to do it from the other side. This was my husband's idea yesterday. He said, oh, wouldn't it be easier if you did it from the other side because you've just got one piece of fabric. Huh? Good point. Mm, good point. Sometimes they're useful. Sometimes. <laughs> Not often. <laughs> but in the pattern I show you how to do it from the front using a Frickson pen. Yeah, but actually, yeah, because I guess if you did it from the front, you would have to mark it anyway, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, we've got a message from Susan. Morning, it? Susan. Good morning, everyone. I'm slowly recovering from tonsillitis, so treating mm. myself to Sally Ann's lovely needle place I've wanted for ages. There you go. What better treat? It's nice. It's a really, 
it's, it looks like, you know, this is when you get the kit at home, you can try it all out, have a go, make your needle case, and then you'll still have fabric over to make other things as well. So it's a really nice thing to do on cold January days when you can't go anywhere. Make yourself something pretty. Make someone a gift. You can make it for a friend, post it to them. With the needles? With all the needles in it as well. Can you imagine how pleased they'd be? If you've got a, a needle case, beautiful needle case, filled with well, every needle it's, you'll it's ever need. It's a thoughtful gift, isn't it? It's so it really thoughtful, is. isn't it? You know, if you know someone who likes sewing, imagine receiving this in the post. I wonder how many, so in the bundle, is enough to, how many can you make? Do you think? Gosh, I don't know. Make a few, quite a few. Yeah, Hannah, could you work out the maths for me, please? No. Okay. Just going to straighten up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, I th I think there's I think you'd be able to make two. But remember, the great thing about this is that you can use fabrics from your stash. So you'll have this plenty of liberty. If you mixed in other fabrics as well, because you're going to make the patchwork, you could use and then another plain fabric for the outer. So you've got a lot here. You could easily make two or three. Oh, yes. By adding some of your own fabrics in as well. Definitely. Okay, so, okay, so we've now got a grid. We've now got a grid, and I've just straightened it up a little bit. What we're going to do now is we're going to fold back the little windows. So... now. I did this one. Oh, this one is done by hand, okay? And I'll show you that in a second. <coughs> so that one's done by hand, but I'm gonna right. actually show you how to do it by machine. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not quite sure how it's gonna go on this machine. <laughs> <laughs> but we will give it a go. We'll give it a go. So well, it's a bit like cathedral windows. You can sew those down by hand or machine. That's up to you, yeah. isn't it? So. Yeah, so if I was home, I would use the smallest foot I had. Right. So like a quarter inch foot, I've got um, a Juki machine and that's got an even smaller foot than a quarter inch foot. Um, I would also use um, a knee lift and a pivot facility mm. um, if you've got a machine that's, and a needle down function. Right. That is the way to go. Um, I have got a bigger than normal foot on here. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's going to go okay. Obviously I haven't got all these extra bits and pieces. So, and also I would use a stiletto. Mm. Do you sell the... I think you do. Yeah, no, yeah. we have those. We have those on the website. Okay. And that's for just holding it open. Yeah. I guess you can use a seam ripper, though, couldn't you? You could do. The point of one yeah. instead. Yeah. So as you can see, I'm just sort of pulling it back. I think I'll change the stitch length down just slightly to make it a little bit smaller. And you could use um, different stitches as well on this. You could use a little bit of a zigzag. You could mm. use um, perhaps with a monofilament with a clear thread okay. or you could do a straight stitch which is what I'm going to do. Okay, thank you. So, hang on. so what do you do? You pull back the so window. So I've just sort of pulled back the window. You don't press it then, you just pull it back by hand. You just pull it back by and hand. And then sew it down. And then sew it down. Mm. She said. I'm following you, I'm following your progress in the instructions. Hang on. Let's get started the right way. I just grab that. So you just pull back the little windows and then you either, well, machine stitch or slip stitch them. Yes. And the idea um, behind the, like, the little buttons that are on it, which look really good, is they actually cover that pivot point. Okay. So if you so make, if you a, if you make a mess of the yeah, pivot point, then it doesn't matter stick so much. a button on yeah. it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so the one that the, what Sally Ann's got here is the Hera marker, but it has one end of it double. Oh, I love that Hera marker. I love Hera markers; they're brilliant, aren't they? Yeah, I love them. It's one of those tools that you look at and you think, really, mm, really? and then you use it a couple of times, you think, you are brilliant. The, yeah, they're just great. I mean, you could use the other end for marking the lines as yeah. well, couldn't you? They just you don't think that they're going to mark a line that you can see, but and then obviously the other end you've got a stiletto. Yeah. It's gonna work. Get you. Okay. Right. 
actually I've got a needle down facility so I'm going to stop at the pivot point mm. and then pu pull in the next one. If you don't one. have that on your machine just make sure the needle's down. Yeah. You don't have to have, it doesn't have to automatically do it. There we go. So, so when you get to the end you put the needle down and then you sew around the, then you pull the next curve back. Yes. So it's a bit tricky to do on one leg. Usually, can you see how it, like a knee lift is going to be really handy for doing this? Uh, yes, because then you don't have to keep lifting it up and down. Yeah. But you know, you can you can use any machine for this. It just take a little bit longer if you've got to keep. Yeah, I mean, I it. did time myself yesterday. So on my machine, it took me about twenty minutes to do this. Okay. So the whole thing. Whereas I imagine today, because I'm. Fighting the machine a little so bit. So, would you prefer to do this bit by hand or machine? Um, I prefer it by hand. It looks a little bit neater, I think. Okay. So, it's just personal preference, and yes. you can choose. If you try it by machine, if you're struggling with that, then do it by hand. Yeah. So. It helps as well. I mean, I, I'm looking down on it at the moment, but whereas at home, I'm sat looking across it, which seems to help as well. So you do one whole row at a time? Yeah. So it's continuous all the way mm. down. That last one's going to be tricky to get to. see it's beginning to to come out. Do you want me to try and Yeah, well the if you take side? it out then okay. then we can have a look, see see what's happened. Yep. Because it probably uses because you can't see as well. Yeah it's not as easy to see under the machine but look so, oh that's great. So, so it's a little bit really hit and miss. Okay. I haven't done it very well but you get the idea. It, move it left just a tad. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So you would. Yeah, you can see how see. the the windows are just opening. Yeah. But again, if you don't want to do it by machine, you just pull it over by hand. hand yeah. It? So here's one that I've done before. Oh, okay. And sewing it by hand. So I've got just a little bit of. So know. this is using this isn't using the same fabric from no. the bundle. This is just the one that you had at home. So those are, oh you've got little windows. Yes. So these are hand sewn, and it's just you just push it and back. What, ne what needle are you using there? I think it looks like it. Is it a seven? I think number seven. What sort of needle? A hand sewing seven. Sharp, cruel. Sharp. A sharp. Yeah, I think so. I don't know, I'm not an expert on needles. I tend to find a needle that I like and stick with it for everything. Oh, right, okay. Oh, dear, <laughs> dear. So, yeah, so this is just some 50 weight thread, hand sewing needle, and you're just going to go into the background and into the fold. You just need to move your head back a little Ooh, bit. I knew I'd do that. And then move the... Right. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So into the background. Right, so this is the same thing, but just by hand instead. Yeah. Into the background. Okay. Into the fold. Oh, I think I'd definitely hand sew it. <laughs> it sort of feels quite nice. I like hand sewing, though. I prefer hand quilting to machine quilting. So I think it's a personal preference, isn't it? But what's quite nice with this is that you could sit and do all the machine bits and then leave it till the evening. Sit in front of the tea, telly and do this bit. Yeah, could do. Yeah, so it's a nice little thing to do. Eventually. So how do you make these bigger ones then? Bigger ones? Bigger windows. Oh, it's just a slightly different size grid. So okay. the grid that I've put in here is a one by one right. inch grid. So in here you can see these are one by one mm. and these are, so these, is, these are still two inch strips, but the grid is actually 
a two inch oh, right. grid. So the bias strips are the same, but they're just the across rows of there are less of them. Yeah. Okay. And then that gives you a different look. So there's loads of design possibilities because you could use like a big and then a small, a big, a small. Oh, okay. So it'd be yeah, so you, it'd be worth actually doing almost like a sample practice piece. Yeah. The other thing that I've done um, with this particular technique is I've done it on um, vinyl, clear vinyl. Right. So you just overlay your strips onto a clear vinyl mm. and you sew through that and then obviously you pull back your windows in the same way and so you get something that is see-through in the little windows. Wow. Do you see what I mean? And yes. it makes a great little makeup bag. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, that's, not, that's a nice idea. Is it easy to sew through the vinyl? Yes. Surprisingly so. Mm. I thought I'd have, you know... I was Even by hand? Well, so I, I, did, I did that on the machine. Right, yeah. okay. So I pulled back the windows on the, on the machine. But, um, yeah, I, I thought I'd have to invest in a Teflon fur and if my she machine weren't going to like it, mm. it was fine. Oh, OK. That's a really nice idea, isn't it? Just so you get little windows. You can make a nice bag out of that. A lot of people have these clear bags and I think, well, I don't think I'd want everyone seeing the contents. But with the little windows like that. Yeah, and also if you... Um, so, like, for a makeup bag, you could make the back a sort of quilted piece mm. and the front the vinyl windows. And then, of course, you can see through the through the windows the fabric the feature fabric on the inside oh, nice. yeah? yeah so you put something really nice inside mm. and every so often you, you get a glimpse well. and much easier to find what you're looking for yeah so right so just while you finish off that we're going to go okay. back through the bundle so nobody misses out on them um the one that sally ann was working with which is the um had the pale pink which is this one here that's called the Liberty Bouquet chain has got a fat quarter of, it's 100% cotton, really lovely quality, pale, very, very pale pink. Um, this has been specially cut for this kit because you only need a fat quarter, so we've cut it particularly for this. So that's the outside fabric. You've then got a fat quarter of this lovely Liberty print fabric from the Winterbourne collection, and then a compliment, another fat quarter. Um, of this one but isn't it it's really lovely i like the way that this has been selected because the the pink that's on the outside is echoed by the, the small pinks here so if you're just using one piece of fabric you can do that but you could actually fussy cut this so you know because you if you join them together in squares so you could decide what you wanted in the window so you might want that bouquet of flowers or you might want a bit of the grey, but you can change that around. And you also get a half metre of this lovely um, pale custard coloured felt. They, well, it's cream, really, but to me, I think it's like a homemade custard. Half a metre of that, which is absolutely loads. You can make more than one needle case with this, particularly if you um, use fabrics from your stash. You get loads of felt as well. And, of course, don't forget, most importantly, you get Sally Ann's full instructions in this lovely little A5 booklet. Step-by-step -step photos, tips, techniques, measurements, everything that you need to know so that you can use this technique for lots of other things like see through vinyl makeup bags <laughs> okay so where what's next then? okay so like magic i had made <gasps> one yesterday at home wow so that's magic that's what it looks like when it's machine sewn and you've got the time to spend on it and mm. you use a stiletto and you do all the things that i yeah we, we talked about and i've put some little sticker beads on it because i got over over excited really <laughs> they're really sweet aren't they i really like them <laughs> So you could use tiny beads or little buttons? Yeah, you could sew them on, tiny tiny little beads or buttons. And they oh, just cover up. You can just see this one that's come off there. They cover up that little pivot. And that's quite nice, point. isn't it? Yeah. So we've got a message from Jenny. Hi, Jenny. She says, I've sewn cathedral windows by hand, but I don't sew right to the corner. So it adds, oh, so it adds texture so they don't lie completely flat. Oh, that's not Quite a good mm, cool tip, it, isn't it? Yeah. Cool tip. Yeah, so you don't have to sew right into the corner. Yeah, you could just stop and then they would stick out a bit more. Yeah. That's really pretty. Or you could use those tiny buttons. You know the ones that you get on cuffs, you know, on shirts. You get tiny, tiny buttons, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. shirt buttons, that would be really nice. Okay, so all I've done is trim it down so that the front and the back are the same size. I think it's something like five and a half by six and a half. Um, one of the things to look out for, and I actually mentioned this in the pattern, is make sure that you do, because you can see that they're very similar in size. 
that you do attach the, t the, the right, two yes, five and a yes, half inch pieces. Right, yes, I see what you mean. It'd be very easy to do it the wrong yeah. way. So I'm going to make, this is the back now, and I'm going to attach it to the front. So I'm just going to use a quarter inch seam. I think I've adjusted the sewing machine so it's going to sew a quarter inch seam. Just let that go the way that it wants to go, that seam. Okay. I've got some H640 or some fusible fleece. Fusible fleece, so that we've got that available on the website if you don't have any of that. Now, ordinarily... It's and just I an iron-on fleece. If you don't have an iron-on or fusible, it doesn't matter. You just have to tack it on instead. So ordinarily, I'd actually attach it to the back of this. But because I've put those beads on and I'm mm. a bit worried about them, I'm going to attach it to the back of the, oh, the okay. actual interior. This is the interior right. piece. So it still goes in there, just in a slightly different way. But because way. of the beads, you yeah. don't really want to press, press them. Press it, yeah. They might all fall off. Or melt. Or melt, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you just press it on. But if you don't have iron fusible um, wadding, then you can just you tack it on. Yeah. Or if you don't have any, then you can buy it from us. There we go. It's on the screen now. Massive piece. I love fusible fleece. I use it all the time for small projects. Yeah, it's great stuff. Right, so that's... So now I'm just going to put it right sides together. Pin it all the way around and sew all the way around, leaving myself like a two inch, two and a bit inch gap. Okay. And I'm just going to turn it through. That's the theory. A few pins there, so I've just got it right sides together. And if I was home, I'd probably use a walking foot as well at this point. I'm a bit lazy with my walking foot, I can't really be bothered. If I have to do things like that, I can't bother <laughs> to put it on. If I'm doing a whole big project like a quilt or something, I'll put it on, but I just oh, no, I can't be bothered. It's, just, <laughs> it's a bit of a faff because you have to undo the screw. Yes. <laughs> Take the shaft off, put it back on, I can't be bothered, so I just use my normal foot. So this is just a quarter inch seam all the way around. Just gonna put one more stitch in that corner. And I guess you could choose either of them, which one you wanted to go on the inside. Although I do like this dark one. I think it really stands out nicely against the felt. You have to think about your lining fabric. So you're just going all the way around. So you've got yeah. about eight minutes left, Sonny. I like the way it's at eight. About. I think I'm about eight. About eight minutes and 23 seconds. <laughs> So which is your favourite colourway? Oh, the lavender. This one, the yeah, lavender yeah. one. Why is that? Is that because that's your... <laughs> I just really like that. Just like the colour? Yeah. It is lovely. I like the way that the, the outer fabric is quite bright, vibrant, but then the inside fabrics are more subdued. The lilac is Sally Ann's favourite. <laughs> which have one that one is called? I don't know what that one's called. Grey. It's grey. 
It's called, yeah, the, this one here that Sally Ann's favourite, it's called Grey. <laughs> I think it's because they've named it named after the, the grey fabric. But the one that's got the lilac background is the one that's called Grey. And there's only a few left of those. So I do think if you if you want to make one, I know you've got your concentration on Sally Ann's demo, but remember it will be available on YouTube after today, so you can always watch it back. So I've just clipped off the corners. Right. I've left a gap. If I was at home again, <laughs> I'd also get rid of some of that bulk right. and cut some of it away, sort of cut it like an and eight. Trim the seams. Yeah. So let's try and turn it through. Gently. <laughs> so you don't disturb all your beads. <laughs> I, the number of times I've put these beads on and taken them off and oh, put really? them on and put some more. It's because I got overexcited. Get the beads on, you know, mm. that's the main thing. And then Get they the fall off, the put on. them on again. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are only stick-on ones, but I mean, you could sew them on. Yeah, I'd be worried with turning it inside out, right sides out, whether it was gonna, they were going to fall off. I've only lost one so far. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I guess you can stick them back on again. <laughs> yeah. Well, they stick on ones. I guess you could do it afterwards, couldn't you? Well, the other thing that um, I think those, so they, they come with a sticky back, these particular beads, but um, I used high tack glue, put some, oh, in okay. the end, they came off so many times, I put some high tack glue behind them, just some <laughs> fabric glue. But just little seed beads would be pretty as yeah. well, wouldn't they? Mm. Yeah, if you go on our um, sister website, Jewelry Maker, www.jewelrymaker.com. They do loads of beads, loads and loads of beads. And because in the needle pack you get a beading needle, that's fine enough to go through a seed bead. I've got a. Oh, actually, I could probably use that. That here remark is brilliant, isn't it? So you can use it as a stiletto. Yeah. You can use it as a turning tool. A pokey thing. A pokey thing. I never know what these are called. Pokey things. Po <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they're called either. Point turners. They're called point turners, I think. Are they? Pokey things better. I use a kebab skewer. A very Ke bent one. A kebab skewer. Mm. Well, I've got a really long metal one, but it's got a nice end that's sort of point, but it's, it's a flat one. It's not a wooden one. It's flat metal, but it's got a nice end that's pointed enough, but doesn't pierce the fabric. Yeah. So, not too many came off, just a few. Okay, so you can see where we're beginning to go with this now. Okay. Yeah, no, it's beginning to look like a needle case. It is. So you push out all the corners. You push out all the corners. Down. You give it a good press. Mm. And then I quilted it. So I quilted it over the lines that I'd actually used to make oh, the okay. grid. Oh, OK, so just over the grid lines. So I went over those going mm. that way. And I did the same with the back, all the oh, way nice. to the back. And then all the way across. OK. okay? And then you put the, the spine on. So the spine just goes, same sort of technique, fold it to the middle and then fold it in on itself, yeah. yeah? And so the spine would go across this piece here. And it's up to you whether you want to stick another piece of violin in there. Might oh, just okay. gives it a little bit of... It just gives it a bit more structure. Yeah. And then you'd also put a little binding strip here because it just looked a little bit messy here. So I put a little binding strip as well on the edge. Okay, that's yeah? nice. And then... Is that all, that's all in the instructions? Yes. And then... Here's your custard. Here's my custard felt. Yeah. Well, can we rename it? <laughs> oh, but it has to be homemade custard. It's not shop bought because that's much yellower. This is homemade custard. A bit like homemade marzipan. So just two sheets. It tells you what size to cut them in the yeah. instructions. Two of them, short edges bound, longer edges bound. Exactly the same idea as you use for the bias strips on the front. A strip folded in on itself. And then you just bind off your edges. You definitely need to buy a bias binding maker. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you're going to go home and get it out of that box and go, oh wow, <laughs> this is amazing. So, I have them in different sizes as well. And that 
think. I love them. Right, we've got about three minutes left. Three minutes. Oh gosh. So you just bind all around the edge of your felt. You don't have to, but it looks nice if you But do. it looks nice, yeah. And I think if you spend the time on the outside of the needle case, it's worth putting that little finishing touch on the inside. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's just two pages. Just two pages. I guess you could put more in if you wanted to. Would it fit more? Yes, it would do. I think you'd probably take another one. Right. Yeah. Then you end it with six pages. And then you just line them up, put them right in the middle, mm. and then sew them through onto your spine. Okay. So that it folds over. And then, of course, you need to think about how you're going to close it. Right. Saying that, you could have thought about how you're going to close it when you're stitching round as well because you yeah. could have inserted a little bit of ribbon or mm. some sort of tape to make to make a little, button, a little yeah, loop a little loop yeah um, that would look good as well or you could sew a press fastener on yes or you could sew a pre press fastener mm. either side yeah or so. magnetic clasp but you'd have to put that in before you sewed it all together as well wouldn't you yeah or you could um go for it the ribbons just yeah, like no, all the way around. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's quite nice. Well, you could do it where you have the ribbon, it separates, and then you tie it round. Yeah. So yeah, there are lots of things. Yeah, there's lots of things that you really. can do. Yeah, and just load it up with your with your needles. <laughs> and load it up with all the needles from your bundle. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful. Thank you so much, Sally. And it's really, really nice to see. And and you've explained it so well. And it's lovely actually because I've gone through the instructions as you've been talking <laughs> but it's just nice because I've sort of followed it with you and yeah. it, you know it's really clear really easy to understand and Good. what a great technique to learn as well thank you so we will see you back at 10 o'clock 10 o'clock to do similar technique yeah but different yeah and made into a cushion yes so look forward to that thank you okay. very much so I'm going to just do a quick recap on the bundle because we have gone over time so the bundle that Sally Ann was working with, or her favourite, this one. So you get the full instructions, as I've said, tells you everything you need to know. Three fat quarters of plain and two liberties, half a metre of felt. Um, the next one, the blue one. So the blue one, is that called? This is the most popular one. And we are on single figures of this one. So the, that one you get the uh, plain cornflower blue fat quarter, two fat quarters of beautiful liberties, half a metre of custard felt, and um, Sally Ann's full instructions. The final bundle, which is the one that Sally, is Sally Ann's favourite, that's called the grey bundle, you get a fat quarter of this lovely lilac cotton fabric that's used for the outer, two fat quarters of the Liberty, half a metre of custard felt and Sally Ann's full instructions. But do check out, we are on very, very limited numbers. So if it's in your basket, um, you need to check out. Um, if you want iron-on interfacing or you want the iron-on wadding, they're all on the website. So you can scroll or scroll down below the watch live screen and you can buy them there. And don't forget about the needle bundle. If you've made the needle case, you need to fill it with the correct needles. So we've got the pack of nine needles. Again, that's on the um, just down below if you're on the watch live for them. And there's the code there. So um, I will be back in a couple of minutes and I'm going to show you how to make face masks but also I've done something a bit different with them, how to decorate them as well. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So go and get yourself a cup of tea and I will see you in a couple of minutes. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433.
Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page.
While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. If you'd like to get in touch with us. And welcome back. Sorry for the slight delay. We had a few problems. We realised, Hannah and I, that the bobbin wasn't threaded up, the machine wasn't threaded up, we dropped the bobbin, oh, all sorts of things. Anyway, we're fine now. So, this is show is all about face masks. Now, I have demonstrated them twice on air. I think we, I did them on Jewelry Maker, and then I did them with um, John and Neil, which was hilarious, because we taught Neil how to make face masks. So, as obviously we're going to have to continue wearing them for, um, well, I don't know how much longer, but a bit of time... Um, we have got five different face mask panels for you. On each panel, there are, there are enough pieces to make a whole week's worth. So there's seven face masks. So every day you can wear one, put it in the wash and make and have another one. Or you can make them for all the family. But we've got a brand new one because I said, oh, if I'm going to do it today, can we have a pretty one? I want one with sort of flowers on because we've got them four different sides. We've got plain ones and dark ones and um, print ones. But I wanted... A spring flower one so they've created one now in the bundle you get enough um, prints to make seven fully lined face masks but you also get two meters of elastic which is enough elastic for all oh oh two meters of black and two meters of white so you get four meters you get loads loads of elastic loads so let me show you i've got so much on my desk at the let me show you the brand new one today it's called spring floral it's my vague hope that spring's about to arrive so let me show, i can't i haven't got enough room to show you all so as you can see let me get you in close on here there you go so there's one so um there you go. So there's one. So there's the outer. You obviously get two pieces because the way this mask is designed is it's split down the front. Um, these aren't medical grade, obviously. The But, you know, they are fully lined. They're face coverings. So they do go by all the sort of the standards that you need to have them lined. You need to have two layers. But they're day-to-day -day use. They're the ones that you use. No, they're not medical grade because I think they have to be done in a different way. But these are... Um, they follow all the guidelines of face coverings where you have to have them lined. They are printed on a very closely woven cotton, which means that you get less coming in, but you, they're still very, very breathable. Um, each mask has two outer pieces and two lining pieces. Now, I've asked them to keep the lining unprinted and keep it nice and white and clean because then you can see that it's clean i think it has sort of a fresher appearance you can then they are fully washable you can chuck them in the machine the elastic will go in the machine as well once you've made them so you can have a whole week's supply or you can make them for different people if you prefer but i think it's just nice to keep the the lining as just a clean white but that's why it has the outline on it so on this panel let me show you you've got a blue floral a yellow floral this sort of pretty pink and blue floral. I love this one. This is like um, real spring flowers, blue and yellow. And then if I turn it over, so that's four of them. No, I just they're not printed on the back. It's just I can't show the whole panel, so I've turned it over. Um, you've got another three. So you've got the blue and white floral up there. This pretty one very liberty. This one isn't it? Very sort of pink and yellow, green leaves. Liberty look. Very pretty. And then the final one is this pink and white floral. But the great thing is that all the instructions are printed on the panel. So, there you go. You won't lose them. They are all on the panel. And, obviously, the prints are all the same. So, you know, you can buy as many panels as you want to make all different ones. But you can actually use this as a pattern, if you like, to make your own. 
I love this one. I just think it's really important. When at Christmas, I made myself one with gingerbread men on. I think it's important to have one for different seasons because, you know, you see people wearing boring, plain black ones and, oh, you know, I think it's important. Have a pretty one and have a different one for every day as well. That's why there are seven on the panel. And you've got enough, well, you've got more than enough fabric. So I would, I say about 25 centimetres. So you'll get um, half a metre of elastic will make um, one face mask because you obviously need two loops. So you've got loads there. Quarter of a stock of this has already been checked out. So you've actually got enough elastic here for eight face masks. So you're fine. Um, so that is the spring floral, my current favourite because it's the new one. So I'll show you through all the others. Right, I'm just going to do it in order. Again, you get two metres of white, two metres of black. This one is called the um, Spots and Checks. So this is very, I like this is quite spring-like. You say so you get a um, very school, isn't it? Very school or men's shirt, pale blue check. You get a um, a deep blue spot, a grey check. Let me turn it over. Remember, this isn't double sided. It's just I haven't got the room to unfold it all. You've then got a pink check, a really lovely, vibrant, big pink and white spot. You've got a grey check and a lovely tealy greeny spot. That's a grey spot. So all spots and checks. Remember, this is exactly the same. Let me show you, just so you know that they're not printed on the back. They are. It is the whole thing. That's what it looks like. Can you see? I can't see because I can't see through it. There you go. That's the whole thing. And each of the panels obviously comes with the instructions printed on. Seven face masks. There's a week's worth of face masks. So that's the spot and check one. Remember, you do get your two metres of elastic with it. Um, Put that on there. The next one is the um, brights. The bright face mask we're very limited on. So on the bright, I'm just going to hold it up because I think you can probably see it better on the than we laying it on the fabric. So you get a yellow. Um, I'm going to go that way. A yellow, a dark pink, a light pink, and then I'm not tall enough. And then you get a purple, a blue, a green and a lilac. The, uh, these are, uh, they're, all, they're a plain colour, but they've got a very slight texture to them to just give them a little bit of interest. So if you fancy sort of bright colours, they look like canoes, don't they? This one is very limited. It was very popular last time, so this is limited in stock. The next one, I mean, remember you get your two metres of elastic, is called Floral different to the brand new spring floral. So on this one, you get, I can't see them, blue floral, a very um, pretty pink floral at the bottom. I know I can't, the problem is I hold them up and then I can't see. Pink floral, you get a daisy one, all different sorts of florals. So you've got pink, blue, green, and they all feature like little floral pins, big floral pins. So that's on that panel. So that's your generic floral as opposed to the spring floral. Spling, I can't say spring and floral in the same thing. Spling floral, spling floral. Spring floral is in the lead. That's good because that's my favourite. And then finally, this is your sort of very plain and safe one. But I think, you know, these are very just this plain, um, again, this is like a textured plain. So you've got charcoal, beige, blue, grey. This was sold, has sold really well in the past. It's ideal, you know, it's maybe a bit more um, unisex, maybe you need to wear it to go to work, you, you know, you just want it to blend in, you don't, you don't want to have a pretty face mask, but, you know, but it will go with all sorts. Now, I've made these masks for men and women, and they seem to fit everybody, you just cut the elastic a bit longer. Because I think it's people's faces, once the mask bit of a similar size, so, but I have made them for um, the men in my family and they all fit them. So, all the men in my life. <laughs> all the men, made them for all the men. 
So these are great for just, just you know, your really nice plain ones. Again, it's a whole week's worth. Seven instructions are printed on there, two metres of elastic. So you just need to decide which ones you want. Because it, it just, I, I think the problem is, if you've only got one in your handbag or in your pocket, you forget to wash them and you really should wash them every day. And, oh, I find, oh, I can't, no, I can't wash my mask because I might be going out later and it's nothing worse than getting out and realising you haven't got your mask. So now I have one in my handbag, one in my car, one in my pocket, one in my coat pocket because I always forget. But it just means that you can chuck them all in the wash. So buy two panels, you've got two weeks worth. So... What I'm going to show you today, oh yes, and finally, this is really important. This is special face mask glycerine. So now with these face masks, they are fully lined, but there are, um, if you want to add another layer to them, and there are some people who prefer to have three layers rather than two layers, this glycerine is absolutely perfect. It's, it is I mean, again, remember, this isn't medical grade. This is produced by Vlyseline, but it's the one that they recommend, and they call it their mask lining because it's not fusible, so you haven't got any of the glue stuff, but it's very breathable, but it will also wash up to, I think, 60 degrees. So that's really important that you can put this in the washing machine. So if you do want, because some masks you get have a pocket that you can put another layer into, so if you want the three layers, this is exactly what you need. Now, there is enough in the half metre there it is, two ninety nine to make all seven of the masks. In fact, you can make more than that because it's um, because it's not a woven. You can put them all in different directions. So I was making them up, and there's enough to make the whole panel from this. So I'll show you in a minute how you do it by having the three layers. You don't have to have three layers. Remember, it's not medical grade. This is a face covering, but this um, it goes again. It goes with all the government guidelines on face coverings, and it's important if you want that third layer. Um, you can put them in the mask and there is enough here to do all of the seven on the panel. In fact, you can probably make eight of them. And Now, we have had this in stock before and every time we have it in, it sells out. So if you want it, 2 99 for half a metre, which is enough to make all of the masks, um, it will go two thirds is already gone. And I'm going to show you in a minute how you use it and how you sew with it because it isn't an iron on because you don't want all of that glue. You just want it as a plain view. And there is one that has been produced by Vlyseline. And it's called their mask, mask interlining. So I will show you in a minute how to use that. So what I'm going to show you is that because um, because I asked specifically, can we have a spring, spring floral? I just can't say that today. Um, when I was looking at these to cut them out, I thought, oh, do you know what? They, this is just crying out to have a bit of embroidery. Now, I know you're going to say you can't embroider on that because you're making holes in it. Well, yes, you are. But it is fully lined. And I also put the interlining in it as well. Remember, because it's not medical grade, it, it's, it's not the same as you're having to go into a hospital with it. This is a face covering. But I wanted mine to be prettier. So the blue one that we have here, there, I've made. So I'll put it on and show you. So I've embroidered mine. I'll put it on and show you how it looks like. But you have to go up quite close to see my embroidery. It's just a nice detail. Now, so can you see that it's, um, if you get her really close? So you can see from this, can you see all the flowers? Let's put them to one side. There you go. I've embroidered mine to make it pretty. Now, I've got the. Um, the face, the mask into um, facing in that, and it's very perfectly breathable. So if you, if I put it against that one, you can really see how I've embroidered it. It just gives it a little bit of texture, makes it a bit pretty. Maybe you want, you know, you wear different ones to different places, you want to change. And because all these flowers are printed on them, I thought, well, why not? Why not? Now, what I would say, we're going to come in really scarily really close so you can see what it looks like when you've made it. I'll just have to move it over a bit. Woo! Oh, there you go. Now you can see them. Little flowers. It's up to you how much time you've got, how many, because you, you could just embroider the, um, the stems or just the leaves or whatever you want. It just depends how much time you've got, how long you can be bothered, really. Um, the Vlyseline inlay is now sold out. But you don't have to use it. 
I mean, if you want, you can add another layer of fabric. I've only ever made mine with two layers, absolutely fine. But um, it, that's up to you. That's really pretty. So what I would say, when you are, if you're going to embroider yours, you must do it before you cut them out because you will get a much better finish with embroidery if you put it in a hoop. So this is the one that I'm going to do. You can do any of the ones on the panel. I'm going to do this one. So um, what's lovely about this, there's no sort of, there's no pattern. You can do whatever you like. This is just a small wooden embroidery hoop. And we do have embroidery hoops on the website. So just put the area. Now, the, um, the end inch of this goes into, will be folded over to the back. Well, actually, inch and a quarter, if you see. So you've got a quarter inch seam allowance and that inch is folded over. So I did embroider a bit of that and then thought that was a waste of time. So you don't have to do any um, embroidery in the final inch and a quarter. And also there's a quarter of an inch seam allowance included all round. So don't embroider into that because, well, you can, but it's just a waste because we won't see it. So I always embroider in a hoop because you get a better tension. Uh, hoops are on the website. All hoops are available on the website. But... You don't have to, but honestly, you will get a better tension. So this is what's lovely about this. This is so freehand. All the lines are printed here for you, so you can do what you like. Now, I would use um, a cruel embroidery needle for this. We do that because this is my favourite, the embroidery cruel needle. Perfect for this. So let me get some red stranded cotton. Two now, we do also have stranded cotton. I would use two strands. When you're using stranded cotton, pull out twice the length you need, which about a metre is fine. So we sell skein singly on the website, whatever colours you want, but we also do multi-packs as well, which means there's one of them, which is great because all I did is I got myself a handful of threads that I liked that were in springish colours and then I just started stitching. So take, now we've cut it twice the length, take... Oh, and there's the pastel one. There's the pastel bundle, which is ideal for spring flowers. There we go. That's the pastel bundle. Look, nine ninety nine for loads and loads. You can really go for it because once you start doing this, it's really hard to know where to stop because there are loads of flowers. It's just a really nice thing to do to personalise your own face mask. So if you haven't got any stranded cotton, there we are. Um. If you want to use DMC threads, we do sell them individually on the website. Just look at the colours. Yes, I know I've just licked the end of my thread. You're not supposed to. But this is my mask. So I'm allowed to do that. But I can't thread the needle without doing that. But we do always, in case you worry, we do always sanitise everything. So before Sally Ann comes back, everything will be cleaned. Um, so thread, double it over so you've got a loop on the end. And thread... I'm going to do it again, but this is my face mask. So thread the two ends through the needle. This is the quickest way to start, and you don't want too much knots on the back of here. So now we've got um, a loop. We've got a loop on the end. So I'm going to sew around one of these flowers. So just bring the needle up where you want it to start. I'm going to just do a really simple back stitch and put it back down just a short distance away. Now, if you turn it over, there's a loop on the back. So thread the needle through the loop and pull it up. Now you've got a really neat, secure finish without any knots. And that's the easiest way to do it. So what I did was, well, like say for this one, I think, all right, well, I'm going to um, just work back stitch around one of these flowers. That's what I did for the other one to make the roses. And then you do back stitch. And this flower. So you just do a small stitch forwards and then back and make sure you go back into the same stitch you started. So that's a really simple way. Up a short distance away, back into the end of the last stitch and then work all the way around. So that just outlines a flower. That's really simple. So you could just outline all the flowers you want. You could use a different colour for each one or lots of different colours. Um, another thing you can do, and I did on my mask here, is all the little yellow blobs are all French knots. 
that adds a nice texture to it and it's a really quick way of filling a flower. So say I wanted to work the centre of this flower just as a French knot. Bring the needle up, then hold the thread in your left hand between your thumb and your finger and then wrap the needle around the thread, not the other way, it's easy if you do it, the needle around the thread. I did it twice, one, two, holding that thread taut, put it back into the fabric, just a tiny distance away from where it came out, pull it through, hold this thread, the one that I'm shaking, tight, and then as you pull it through, that will make a nice neat knot. So now you've got a French knot. The other thing you can do, um, before we move on to making the face mask, is you can work lazy daisy stitches, and these work really well if you want to embroider any of the leaves. So if I show you on this one, because we're nice and close up, um, can you see the purple ones here, which I think are lavender? They've, they're all made from individual lazy daisy stitches, perfect for leaves or petals. So you bring the needle up and then put it back in, in exactly the same hole. Don't pull it all the way through, but just push, putting it back out to the length you want it to be. So that's the length of my um, leaf or petal. Then make sure that the thread is under the needle, I've got to be under, and pull it through. You've now got a little loop, and then just work one stitch over it to tie it down, and that's a lazy daisy stitch. So I'll do that one again, do it again. So you bring the needle up, loop the thread round, put it back in exactly the same hole, and then pull it back up that the needle is just a short distance away. Make sure the thread is under the needle, very important, or you won't get a loop. Pull it all the way through and always pull gently and then work a little, tiny little tying down stitch over the loop and that will hold it into place. So you can see it's already building up. So I've done just those two little stitches. So what I might do now, I might do the centre of some of the flowers in yellow, back stitch around them. You could do all the leaves in green. Um, I used on my mask here, I used um, back stitch to work all of the green stems. Lazy daisies to do the, I think I decided they look like lavender. Um, French knots for the centre of the flowers. But you know, you can change it about. You can do, just try when you do it, maybe because you need to have, the same similar amount of embroidery on both sides so I did sort of all the red flowers on both sides then I did all the green and then I went back and decided I wanted some more yellow but if you do all the embroidery on one half and then all the, you might then get a bit bored and not do all the same on the other half and it when it's made up it needs to look like one piece of fabric so that would be my advice do all the colors so just make sure it, it balances up right so that's the embroidery. I mean, you can do whatever stitches you want. Just make sure I would put your fabric in a hoop and keep pulling it tight. When you finish your thread off on the back, um, let me just show you that because it's important. You don't want too much bulk. Just um, thread the thread three or four times through some stitches on the back. That's enough to secure it. I always find if you split the thread as well, so if you rather than going underneath, but go through some stitches, it makes it a bit secure. And then just cut it off. And then you can see like on the back, we really haven't got a lot of bulk. Don't go across anything more than about two centimetres an inch, otherwise you have lots of loose threads on the back. So you don't have to embroider them, but if you fancy personalising it, that's a really nice way to do it. So I just want to quickly um, recap the bundles because the Brights bundle has almost sold out. So we've got the... Um, the neutral face masks. Right, so the neutral bundle, which are all these sort of plain fabrics that are really great for multi-use. There's only 10 of these available now. So if you wanted to use them maybe for going in the office, um, unisex, maybe um, more men who don't want to wear floral face masks, can't understand why, but you know, they want something a bit plainer, ideal for that. That's the neutral one. Remember, all of these come with um, the instructions printed on the panel and two metres of elastic, which is enough to make all seven. <coughs> right, the bright one, has the bright one sold out? So that one's gone. Um, the spots and checks, spots and checks. How are we doing for stock on this one? 
So well over half of the stock has gone on that one. So we've got um, little pink spots, big pink spots. Um, I can't see. Spots, so um, teal spots and grey spots. And then if I turn it over, we've got blue checks, blue spots and grey checks on that side. So spots and checks in greys and blues and pinks. Um, <coughs> then we've got the brand new spring floral that I'm doing today. Now with the spring, spring floral face mask there are more of these in baskets and checked out so if it's in your basket and you really really want it you need to check out. So we've seen these already you've got seven of them you've got the blue floral pink floral this lovely liberty-esque floral and um, that lovely little yellow print the blue one that's the one that i've embroidered when i made up um, a blue pink and yellow very soft floral and then this one that's really i love this i think it's my favorite one and with this one it would look lovely if you just worked orange french knots in the center of each of those flowers so not very much embroidery but that would really it, i always find when you embroider a fabric it really sort of makes that area really zing and stand out so that's the spring floor remember remember you get with all of these you get two beads of elastic and the single figure and then the final one is this floral this is the original floral one we did not the spring floral one it's different but it's floral so on this one, you get, let's have a look on this side, blue floral, little pink one. Now that one, remember the fabric is folded over. You, um, It's not, not double-sided. Um, there's those four florals. And then on this side, you've got, now this one here, I've already made up. I made that one last time. I put black elastic on that one. I think it went really nice with the pink. So that's what that's what that one looks like made up. See? Look, that's what that one looks like. If you fancy just a pink, a pale pink look. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's nice to have different colours. It makes your face look different. Depends whether you want to blend in a bit more with a pink one. And actually, I'd just like to say my glasses are not steaming up. Which is amazing because they normally do. They normally do. Um, I love, I love the daisy one. This one looks like a bit of a daisy, and then this pretty, very pretty. That makes me think. Right. So that's all of them for now. Should we get on to actually how to do it? Now we've done embroidery, so you don't have to, but it's just a little idea if you fancy making an extra special one, or you know, if you're making them for somebody else and you know somebody who would like a little bit of a treat. Then you could embroider one, pop it in the post, um, and then quite a nice little gift for somebody, isn't it? Who would not like to have one of these? Right, so this, the original floral one, which is the one that's from um, the mask that I've got here, is pretty much the only one we've got left in stock. But I am going to show you how to make them nevertheless. Yes, and this is one of the um, neutral ones. See, made made loads of them. So what you do is to start with, just made loads of them. Um, cut them out along the outer lines. All seam allowances are included. You don't have to think about that. You don't have to include that. They are included. So you need to cut out the outers. Now, obviously. I would say to cut out the same outers, but if you want to go a bit random, you could mix one outer with another outer. So you could have a double-sided one. So, you know, with some of the panels, you've got similar prints in different colours. You could have them double-sided. You know, that's up to you. I've cut them out as the same. That's what most people will do. But if you want to have different ones, you can. And then you need two linings like that. Really simple. The instructions are on the sheet. I cut mine out so I could put them beside my machine and follow them. You can make a fast face mask out of the instructions after that, draw around it. Might look a little bit odd. <laughs> you'd be you'd see people looking at you, you'd learn how to make a face mask. Um, if if you want to use the um, if you've bought the 
interfacing interfacing can't get the right word if you have bought the interface and you're going to use it what you need to do is um, I sew them to the lining but you can sew it to either it really doesn't matter for, I just decide to sew it to the lining now obviously the lining is you can use either side but it's quite important you can place this anywhere because it's non-woven you need to make sure that you've got these opposite way round because you need the light, you need the interfacing on the inside of the lining or the outer. So make sure that you haven't got them the same way round, otherwise you'll have them on the wrong side. So put them on the wrong side, pin it into place with these beautiful flower pins. and then cut round them with a nice pair of sharp scissors. And because you can place these in any direction, just make sure when you place them that you've got them right, um, that you've got them in opposite directions. Um, now, you can either, actually I might just sew it on like that. You don't have to cut, if you cut them round them evenly, it's probably a bit easier to do that. So there's a quarter of an inch seam allowance um, included in all of this. So you need to sew these on within that quarter of an inch seam allowance because you don't want this stitching to show. You could tack them on by hand if you want because all of these seams will be enclosed later. I just use my machine. So you sew it on all the way around but within the seam allowance. So just like eighth of an inch or you know two or three millimetres all the way around. Or you can tack them by hand if you prefer. I just found it easier to do and quicker to do it by machine. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight or anything because you won't see this stitching. And obviously you need to... But you can do... I You can either do it on the outer or the lining. It actually doesn't matter because it's just that extra layer. And it's, it's nice actually. It's a really nice, very soft and flexible interfacing. It's quite nice to deal with. I'm not even reverse stitching there because I don't really need to. Um, take the pins out and then cut round the edge simply these scissors must be magnetic and just cut round the edge so you can cut it out first but I actually found it easier um, to pin it onto the interlining on, onto the lining because the lining is so thin it starts slipping around and you have to try and match the edges so it is easier to it's easier to cut and sew. Right, then, um, then press it, but don't press the line, the interlining, the interfacing side. I tried that and it sort of melted a bit. So don't do that. Press it on that side. Right, so do that with both pieces. I won't do that because you need a bit of speed. But it just, it doesn't add masses of weight. It doesn't make it stiff. It's not like your normal sort of medium interfacing that then becomes really stiff. But you know that you've got that extra layer of protection. It's fully breathable and fully wa washable up to 60 degrees. Right, so when you've done that, take your two outer pieces and place them right sides together. Like so. And we're going to sew them together around this curved seam. So pin them together first. And remember, quarter of an inch seam allowance. And do the same with your two lining pieces. I haven't put the interlining on this side just for speed. So remember, if you've done if you've done that, you will have if you've put that on, you'll have it on the other one. And exactly the same with the lining piece as the outer piece. Okay. Just needs a couple of pins. Right. Quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's a quarter there, isn't it? Yeah. You need to remember to um you need this stitch this seam to be secure, so do reverse stitch at the beginning end. Now slow stitch nice and slowly, keeping the quarter of an inch marker on your sewing machine bed level with the raw edge, just because this is the centre seam of your mask and you want it to look neat. So just do it a bit slowly. 
It's the only tricky curve in the whole thing. But it has to be there so it fits over your nose. And then do exactly the same with the lining. I mean, it's quite, it's quite easy. It's just you just go a little bit slowly because it's quite a curve. But actually, it will go all the way around. You don't need to pivot at all. If you do it gently, it will go around without pivoting. All the way around. Love these ironing mats. You can stick your pins in them. Not sure you that. All the way to the end, and then. Right. Um, try and get in the habit when you sew, always press. You, whether you press your seam open or to one side, press the seam because the um, thread, the needle, the action of the needle and the thread going through the fabric disturbs it. You'll find it easier to press open when you do that. Now this is quite a <coughs> st steep curve. So in order to get this to open nicely, we're going to just snip it. It's because you've only got a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm not going to put notches in. I'm just going to do little snips about every um, centimetre, half an inch, about that, all the way along. Just take, be extra careful that you don't cut the stitching, obviously. All you have to, if you do, you just have to go back and re-sew it, but try not to. And this will just help the seam to lie flat and then do the same with the lining as well. But obviously don't snip the stitches. Now, to, because obviously you've got a central seam in here, <coughs> it's best to have the seam pressed over to one side because it protects the seam more. It's, the seam will be much more open and vulnerable to germs and breathing if the seam is open. So if you press it to one side, it won't be. So it's a bit tricky to press, to be honest, because it's a funny curve. You have to sort of open it with your hands and I work from one side to the centre and then I go from the other side to the centre. Once you've done that, the easiest way now to get that nicely pressed is to sometimes if you need if you're told to press a seam open or to one side and it's on a funny curvy bit like this, it's easier to actually press the seam from the right side. Make sure you roll it so that the seam's right on the edge. And then we'll do the same with the lining fabric. Just make sure that the seam is right on the edge. You can do that, run your fingers through it. Or if you want to get a really crisp edge, get the end of your scissors, the rounded bit, and run it along the inside of the seam. And then look, you get the seam right on the edge. That's just the easiest way if you've got to press a seam and you can't get into it. That's the easiest way to do it. Right, now we're going to put the right sides together. When you get to the top of here, you'll see that there's this seam sticks up a bit. So just trim that off. It just makes it easier to sew together and on the lining one as well because it's just it's like the dog ears that stick up. So we're going to place them right sides together. Now the, I always match the top seams first. Now you see how we've pressed these to one side. Make sure this is this will also reduce bulk but protect the seam. That the lining seam goes one way and the outer seam goes the other way. Make sure you match up the seam. That's just for neatness and so it fits properly. And pin it into place. And that just ooh, it's jumping pins. So you can see that that lining seam is going to the right and the outer seam is going to the left. So match up that. And now let's match up the other one. Make sure that the seams are going the same way at the top and the bottom. Otherwise, they will, you will have a lot of bulk and you'll have a bulky nose. Match up the seam there. So once you've matched up those two seams, it's easy now to match up everything else. Match up the edges. I just need a few more pins. Make sure they're right sides together, obviously. And then you can pin the other side. 
And obviously, because these are exactly the same sizes, then you know that they'll match up. So that's why it's important to keep that central seam the same size, or these won't match up. But just go slowly. It's quite easy. If you're at all concerned, draw the seam in and sew on top of it. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to sew this together all the way round and then we're going to turn it right sides out so you need to leave a gap. So what I do is I leave a gap in one of the short edges. I sew, I sort of start maybe <coughs> like three quarters of an inch from the top down the bottom and then come all the way there so that the gap you're leaving is um, about three quarters of an inch from the top and the bottom in one end. So just start and finish there. Actually, let's bring my pin tray over. Again, this is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You need to um, reverse stitch at the start and finish to make sure that seems secure. When you get to the corner, stop with the needle down, lift the foot and bring it round and then you sew all so we're going to sew all the way round when you get to those central seams although you have pinned them just check underneath to make sure that that's lying flat and make sure that this top seam stays flat you can hold it down with a pin as you're stitching because that really helps but it's with something as small as a face mask it and particularly because that central seam is running over your nose it's important that the seam is flat but also not twisted you know sometimes I'm sewing things and I get twisted seams it doesn't really matter too much but with something like this it does if you do find it gets twisted then when you finish then just go back unpick that little bit of the seam untwist it and go back again but if you hold the seam down with a pin as you're going then um, that won't happen So the only, um, Hannah's just telling me, the only face mask we have left in stock is the spots and checks. So, again, make sure, just have a little look to make sure that um, that seam is lying flat. nearly finished you see how quick these are to make if you're making all of them at once because I made quite a few the other day for I can't remember whether for somebody or for the show can't remember um, I did all the stages together so I cut all of them out then I sewed all the central seams then I did all of this so they kind of all finished at the same time so if you're doing something for the first time make one so you know how to do it and then you can make the rest as like a production line um, so that's sewn all the way round again don't forget, always press your seams because you will get a neat finish. Just be careful on this um, on this um, interfacing because it, it does melt a, a bit. Um, what you need to do, I'm not going to do that now because I want to show you what, what happens, is um, clip the corners because that will help them turn right sides out better and snip these curves around the top. You can also, on the particularly on the top curve where there's a lot more bulk, is you can trim the seam down to maybe about an eighth of an inch, it will just help. Then, turn it inside out. The best way to do this, put your hand through the hole and go all the way through and grab the opposite corner. It turns out easier than if you grab it all the way th halfway through. We also have other mask panels on the web website which are a different design to this. They're pre-printed and they're a straight one. And some of the designs are really funny. There's like sort of children ones and ones with teeth and things. So if have a look on the website. But if you want to um, make the, f the um, straight masks, then we do have panels for those as well. They're sort of rectangular. So obviously, if you're doing this at home, you would press the seam, you trim the seams, cut the corners, press them open and it would look a lot neater. I'm just showing you for quickness. Um, so you turn it right sides out and it will look like that. Then what you do, I'll show you on my, um, I'm gonna show on this one because I've got different colored stitching here. Once it's all turned right sides out, fold the edges inwards. And then you don't have to do this, but it gives a really nice finish. 
top stitch all the way around the edge that closes that seam there but also it just gives it a nice finish you just do it nice and slowly and then finally you fold the ends over by an inch now I've made the casing quite wide because I hate trying to thread elastic into something that's too narrow also once you've folded that over and sewn it down you thread the elastic through and then you don't really want to see the knot so having that big casing helps but cut your elastic a little bit bigger than you think you need put it on and see is it too loose or is it too tight you don't want it either way and then knot the two ends you can see there and then what you can do because you don't want to see those ends is you can then pull them through and because this casing a lot of the face mask patterns I was using originally that casing wasn't very big so I couldn't get the knot inside so that's so why I made it a bit bigger so there are more people who have got these panels in their baskets than we've actually got in stock so if you want it you need to check out um, if you're making your own face masks and you want to buy just the elastic or maybe you're going to buy a panel and you're going to use it as a template to cut out from your own fabric because remember all of these are the same I mean I've designed the I designed it so that it was the right shape and size and using other ideas and other patterns but I changed it slightly so that it had a bigger casing and um, slightly different parts so you know I'm quite happy if you want to draw around my pattern and make your own face marks that's fine but we do sell the black elastic in in cut into meter pieces um, if you look on the web, it looks like you get a big roll, but you don't. You get a metre piece. Now, I would say about 25 centimetres for each one is fine. So half a metre will make one mask. So two metres, you'll make four masks. Well, they're metre pieces. Metre pieces, you'll get two masks. Unless you've got a particularly big face and you want to make it a bit bigger. But, you know, sometimes people don't want them too tight. They want them a bit looser. So um, I would say I've in my mask here... Um, I've got 25 centimetre pieces so that's about so that's nearly done I mean you you know you look how quick that was it just needs some top stitching around the edges and these folded over and then that's it very very quick so good luck with your face masks don't forget to message us in the studio send us photos of what you've done particularly if you've embroidered it because I would love to see pictures of what you've done um, if you've already checked out and you just want the elastic, it's only 99p. So, you know, if you've checked out already with something else, um, then you can buy the elastic. You've always, the PMP's already done because remember, it's only one PMP per day. Okay. So, um, we are going to have a break for a couple of minutes and Sally Ann will be back with us to show us more of an amazing folded um, technique to make a beautiful cushion. I'll see you soon. Hi, my name is Yvonne Makatamne. My passion is patchwork and quilting, and it's also my privilege to own Village Fabrics patchwork and quilting shop in Wallingford. Um, my sewing life began whenever, before probably I, before I went to school, certainly, and probably before I could uh, read. Uh, my mum was always a sewer, and with two big sisters, we would, every weekend, there would be a new dress made, and I was allowed to do certain pieces and as I got older I started to make some dresses. My top tip is you don't have to be able to draw to design. The place that I always start is with a children's colouring in book. They have good bold outlines and then you can trace that and adapt to your heart's content. Anybody can do it. My claim to fame is that last year, when things were good, we had Jenny Doan from Missouri Star Quilt Company come and do a meet and greet at my shop in Wallingford. We had a really enjoyable day and good fun was had by all. So I hope I'll be popping into your living rooms on a regular basis as we go forward with Sewing Street here. We are intending to bring you some absolute beginner kits as well as some of our more intricate designs. See you soon. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools.
and find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Sorry, I was just just retrieving the cushion. I thought, where is she gone? Um, so Sally Ann is back with us this hour to make this beautiful Japanese origami flower cushion. Let me show you. How lovely is that? So it's using the same thought and the similar technique to what she did in the previous hour, only a bit different. So which you explain. So you've got the outer fabric on this is a felt, and then the inner fabric is a beautiful print. And then you open it all out to reveal how the whole thing works. So this is a cushion. It's got a nice gusset on it. Um, Sally Ann's put a zip in the back of hers. You can do finish it however you want. So let me show you the bundles to make this. So we've got three different choices for you today. Which one shall I start with, Hannah? The pink one. So we're going to start with the pink one. So in the bundle, you get the full instructions to make the cushion. So let me show you. Um, gives you all of the cutting out instructions, everything you need to make it all full, beautiful step-by-step um, -step photos that are really clear so you can see how do you create the circle, how do you cut it out, how to sew, you actually sew through the freezer paper. The photos of revealing the petals. So it's all very close up. It's really easy to understand. Obviously, Sally Ann's going to be demonstrating it for us. So you'll be able to see all of this. But when you've bought your kit, you get the instructions home. You can watch it back on YouTube, but also you've got all of the explanation here. So you haven't got to remember anything. Um, she's even put information in here about how to put the zip in as well on the cushion back. And um, Sally Ann has bound, piped hers with beautiful covered piping, which you, you know, again, this is an optional thing. You don't have to do that. It's just an extra finish. But if you want to do that, all the information is in there for that. How to do the final construction, making it up. And that's all in there. And they, that full instructions comes with the bundle. So in the bundle, you get a meter. I think this is a meter. Oh, it's amazing. I'm getting better at this. I can, before I unfold it, I can tell how much it is. You get a metre of this lovely Liberty Pink fabric from the English Tumbling Daisy from the English Garden Collection. It's a very, very pretty pink. Now, this is the fabric that you will be using for this, um, the inside bit and the piping. So that's what that fabric's for. It's beautiful. But it's, um, it's a quilting weight, Liberty. It's not your town of lawn, Liberty. It's a proper quilting weight. So you get a metre of that. You get a metre of white. There we go, just plain white fabric. I'm not going to unfold that because... And half a metre of this pure wool purple felt. 
it's very difficult to get hold of pure wool filled, particularly as like whole pieces. You can buy it in squares, but to buy it on the roll, so to get it as a half metre is not the easiest thing to find. Now, there's enough felt here to do the front of the cushion, the back of the cushion, and um, all around the gusset section as well. So you've got plenty of felt here, and it is a beautiful pure wool felt. Right? Um, so that is the, what's that one called? The Pink Daisy. The next one is this blue one. I like this one. So the Libid, so again, you get the full instructions, exactly the same as the other bundle. And then you get this lovely, a meet of this lovely Liberty. This is really nice. It's um, blue clouds with lots of spaceships and aeroplanes flying through it, which is really pretty. And then, but this is one of the prints from the Liberty Archive. It's even got like little thunderbolts coming out of it. And what's lovely is that you'll just see through the felt when the, when the technique is done, you'll just see little pops of this. So you'll see the odd little plane, but this is very nostalgic, isn't it? It's a very sort of um, traditional, kind of a 1950s blue shade. And I love that it's a bit sort of Thunderbird, isn't it? With all these planes flying around. I really like this fabric. It is, it's very nostalgic, isn't it? But it, I think it works, for, it's called Rocket Dance. But it works really well with this technique because you've got the very small elements on it. So you get a metre of that, you get half a metre of the cream fabric, and then again, half a metre of this pure wool, purple felt, beautiful quality and a really lovely, vibrant colour. That's that bundle. And the final bundle... Obviously, full instructions for the Japanese origami cushion, a meter of this green Liberty. It looks very um, classy. Let me see what this one is called. This is from the English Garden collection called Floral Dot, but with the purple, it's very lovely. It's very sort of formal living room, isn't it? But, you know, you imagine if you did the piping with this as well, but sort of showing through it is a beautiful combination. And, you know, well, you know, I mean, this is the heritage and the nostalgia and the tradition of the Liberty fabric. And against the pure wool felt, it's a real sort of luxury quality buy. And not only that, but you're learning a brand new technique all at the same time. But it's, uh, you know, I think... For the price thirty nine ninety nine, it's incredible value for money because you get an instruction booklet where you learn a new technique. You're getting a meter of Liberty fabric. You get half a meter of this beautiful pure wool full felt. It's um, and a new technique that you can use and adapt and make other things with. Sally Ann was saying earlier, this would make a beautiful circular bag. You could make it bigger. You can use this technique time and time again for lots of different things. But what you're getting in the kit is superb value for money. Anyway, welcome back, Sally. I've gone through all the kits now. So, um, what inspired you to make this one then? Because I always like to know that. It was just a, a step up. Okay. Sort of like playing around with the Liberty Chain. Mm. Um, again, Pinterest. Pinterest. Oh, Pinterest. Love the Pinterest. I saw um, lots of different things on there with sort of slashed fabric. Um, have you got your mic? Oh, I have. I haven't got it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whoa, is Give it in? Do you want to go and get it? <laughs> oh, right. Oh, she's got it on, but it's just not switched on. It's right. She'll just come and sort it out in a minute. <laughs> I didn't realise she couldn't hear her. I think it's... Could... <laughs> so, while Sally Ann sorts the mic out, I just want to repeat the early bird for you because we haven't... Well, I was supposed to do it in the last hour and I forgot. Got too excited by masks. So, we'll just do it in this hour instead. Um, remember, we've got this fantastic collection of storage boxes. Um... £30 off. We've had a chat. I think this is the best early bird we've ever done. Well, no, best, as in best value. The best offer early bird that we've ever done with, you know, with £30 off the whole thing. So you get all of these storage boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there are six. And they all stack. They've all got this really lovely um, elastic... Um, closure which is so carefully engineered that there's a little groove in the bottom of the box so that the elastic sits in there you get a medium one a baby one the next one up one that's a pin cushion one that you can put threads or crochet hooks or zips or stranded cotton in and then this really big one you can put all sorts in they're all clear so you can see 
immediately what's inside. They've got this lovely red elastic that goes around them to close them. So if you want to get your store, your sewing room super organised, or maybe you want to use three of them for your sewing room, one for your bathroom, one for your kitchen, buy a couple of sets and they all stack beautifully together. So if you want to do vertical storage, this is the time to start. Okay, so we can go back to Sally. She's got a... One, two, three, testing. Yes, can you hear her? Hooray! Yeah. Hooray! We can hear her now. So, yes. this was the next step up. Yes, yeah, sort of looking at, you know, peeling fabric back and layering fabric. This was another another step, yeah. really. Yeah. Now I'm going to hold the cushion. There we go. So, um, let's start with the front, because okay. the feature of front is, is the main part of this. So, in the pattern, I tell you how to cut you know, the, the dimensions for everything, including the circle in the centre. So I've cut, cut, sorry, I've got the circle on freezer paper. Mm. It gives you the dimensions in the pattern. And then I've got a, an inner circle. Do you have to use pencils. freezer paper? Um, I like using freezer paper because it stabilises it, because I'm about to cut through on right. those lines. Okay. The idea is that it will keep it all stabilised and it won't shift okay. around. So, But freezer paper we do have available. Look. £6.49 for a 12 metre roll. That's going to last you forever. That's really good value, isn't it? I use loads of freezer paper. I love, love freezer it. paper. It's love great it. stuff. So, so it's worth investing yeah, in. Yeah, for anybody who's, who's not used freezer paper before, it's mm. got a shiny side and a paper side. The shiny side you can use, and it actually, you're, with a hot iron, it sticks to fabric. Right. Um, and you can use it probably about six or seven times. So it's okay. great for templates. Put it on, iron it on, peel it off, iron it. Brilliant. I so it's worth having. Yeah. I did, um, I used it for a little fish templates on the edge of my son's quilt. So I just cut one fish, mm. ironed it on and in the border and then quilted around it, peeled oh, it off, okay. stuck the fish down again, ironed it so on. So perfect for quilting, if yeah. you're not marking as yeah. well. Oh, loads of uses. So it's worth having. If you haven't got freezer paper at home, you need some. Okay, so I have got the feature fabric, which is that little skyrocket, mm. right side up on there on a piece of cotton wadding. You don't want to go poly with this because it gives you too much loft. Right, okay. okay. And then on the back, I've just got cream. So that's what the extra cream is for. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. So, so that's for the light. So the cream is basically the lining. Yes. For the top. Okay. Yeah, it goes all on the inside of the, yeah, the inside right. of the cushion. Okay. So um, this is your wool top, and I've ironed my freezer paper template in position. So I'm going to cut through. So I've put in some lines right the way across the diameter. So what's that, 12 till six, three till nine, mm. and then across in between, just using a ruler. Okay. And I've got an inner circle as well. I'm and all of that's details in the instructions, yep. diameters and yep. things. I'm just gonna cut it. So I'm not gonna start right at the very edge because that's a little bit risky. Right, so why <laughs> are you using, oh, you're using a little rotary cutter Yeah, I'm using then. a little rotary so cutter, a little that? bit more control. Okay. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Mm. <laughs> so I'm I know, but most people use a 45 mil. Yeah. So it's quite interesting to see using a smaller one, so just a bit more control. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut mil. along all those lines. Mm. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you really need the freezer, freezer paper, because yeah. you don't want it to move. Exactly. It keeps it all in one place. You don't want to move it. This mm. is when I should have got my you spinning do need a mat. Nice, a nice sharp blade for that, don't you? Yeah. So how close do you cut to the edge of the circle? So I'm cutting probably about half an inch from the edge. Right. I'm going to go in with a pair of scissors. Oh, okay. So you do eventually cut right yeah. to the edge. It's just for, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to do that last clip up to here with the scissors. Okay. Oh, message from Jan. Oh, hi, Jan. Big wave, Sally Ann. Morning, Rebecca and team. I always do a big wave for Jan. <laughs> big wave. <laughs> So you use the rotary cutter just, but this is just like that final yeah. 
final clip. But I guess it's by using the rotary cutter, you haven't got to try and get through, get, get put a hole in no. first. So then I'm going to lay it. So I would have, because I can't use it in the studio, I would have used 505 to right. layer it up. Back in stock. The 505 is back in stock, which is the, um, the spray basting spray, if you don't know what 505 is. But it's for basting easily. So you spray that, spray the backing fabric, put the wadding on top. Top, yeah. Then put the Liberty fabric on top of that. Yeah. And then the felt on top of that. Yep. Does that okay. sort of make sense? Right. And get this. So make sure that you're, you're covering your, your feature fabric. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Right. So again, I would have used some 505 to help me stick it in place. But I just put a few pins to stop it going walk about. Right. So you can use some uh, basting spray if you want, or tack it, or pin it if you yeah if you don't have that. Mm. Mm. So I'm going through all the layers. So um, you used felt for this one, but for the needle case you didn't. Do you have to use felt for this, or is it just... No, just that I like. Well, saying that, it's because I used felt deliberately because you it doesn't fray. Mm. So when you peel back that edge, you haven't got a fraying issue. Right. Yeah. So with the needle case, we had a fold, didn't we? Ah, OK, so you do really, then. Yeah. So it's a different... Yeah, it's not exactly the same no. way. Right, OK. So I'm going to sew around the edge of the circle. Now, I would use a walking foot if I was home, but we... I had some problems with the walking foot, so... I think the walking foot might have walked off. <laughs> <laughs> Just walked off out of the building and down the road. That's because it's a walking foot. <laughs> so if anyone has seen our walking foot, could they just apprehend it and tell it to come back? I don't know where it's gone. So I'm using like a slightly bigger stitch because I'm trying to replicate a walking foot. But okay. Usually I would use a small stitch because you get a better curve. Right. You just go around the outside of the yeah. circle. Yeah. It's like magic, isn't it? I love this way. So at some point, it's all going to be revealed how it works. I'm going to follow you. Follow your instructions. Then I know. Okay. So if you have it, how did you draw your 10 inch diameter circle then? With a compass. So if you don't have that, just find a plate about the right size. Yeah, could do. So I guess this is the same, it's using the same principle as with the needle case where you were sewing in a grid, and this time you're sewing in a circle grid. Yeah. As in like one circle and then in lines and circles. circle in place okay and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around and sew on the inner circle actually through the right paper. still through the freezer paper yep. oh so the other one was around the edge of the freezer yep. paper but this one is actually through the freezer paper yes let's try and keep it in place as much as I can it's a bit, a bit tricky I make the stitch smaller so I can get the paper off. Oh yeah, I suppose because yeah, that helps you to yeah. tear it off, doesn't it? Yeah. 
I guess you just take it nice and slow. <laughs> And does the freezer paper stay in place okay? Yeah, it stays in place. Yeah. stay together or okay on these sort of segments or do you have to sort of adjust it as you go along where you've cut through each segment yeah when you're going across sort of from the inner circle from one segment to another it's it's coming apart a little bit but not a great deal okay i guess because you've got the fabric stable underneath I just yeah whether you have to be careful when you get to the edges or is it seems fine a walking foot would have made it go together a little bit better than this but there we go let's go backwards just do a little reverse do you see what a little bit of a gap there but that if you used a walking foot you okay. wouldn't end it up with anything like that so then it's just a case of taking these off so they're going to rip hopefully You see? Magic. It's good, isn't it? Because it doesn't mark it at all. The Whatever they put on freezer paper. Yeah, I wonder what it is. I don't know. Well, it used to be waxed, didn't it, in the old days? Because, I mean, it is actually for freezing with. Because in the States, they sell it for freezing. We don't use it here, though, do we? Not for freezing. No. Use it for I've never met anybody who said, you know, says I wrap my food to go in the freezer. Yeah, but they sell it in supermarkets, like in in America, to use for freezing. Because you can, I think, if you're freezing fruit or things that might stick, that's what it's for. But I don't think it's wax anymore. It must be some some sort of silicon. But how it works, I've no idea, because it just doesn't mark. So this is the same process as sewing the binding strips down? Yes. Yeah. So these are the centre flappy bits. The flappy bits. <laughs> Technical <laughs> term. The technical <laughs> term for the central flappy bits. So have you done this where you've um, joined it in patchwork like you did with the needle case? Have you done it? Does it work like that? Or do you have to really think about the planning of it? Yeah, you'd have to think about it, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Because also because it's quite shallow here. So if you wanted to do a, a, um, a fabric change, yes. you'd have to do it. You'd have to do it there. So yeah. maybe, yeah, OK. Don't do that then. That sounds really complicated. It works with the other one. I just wondered whether you could do this. But yeah, yeah I see what you mean. That the, it is very narrow, that bit, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just thinking about what other things you could do. You could, though. If you... Mm. Depending on how keen you're feeling, you could make each sec each one a different colour, couldn't you? You could, you could, You yes. could make it rainbow. It would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> or you could have the centre one colour, but that, yeah, that would involve quite a lot of fiddling about and thinking about it. I guess once you've learned the technique, though... And a lot, really going, a lot of math. A lot of math. paper's gone right you can begin to see where we're going to go with this because we're going to peel it back yeah you need to just bring it right a bit sitting under the graph perfect sitting yeah. under the graphics a bit so you're going to play with it in exactly the same way as you did with the needle case just by pushing it back okay so you just fold them back so yeah. they're curved yeah and again use a walking foot if you have one this is a voyage of discovery without a walking foot we will find out it might be fine. 
Um, and you can use like again a straight stitch or mm. you could use a zigzag. I think oh, I've okay. used a zigzag on there. Yeah. If you really want to make it disappear, use a zigzag, a little zigzag, probably one by one. Right. One, yeah, about one, one and a half tops. Because actually on your cushion, it, because you you stitch right on the edge, it doesn't even look like it's folded. You can't see the raw edge. Yeah. That's really clever. Yeah. It, I couldn't work out how it almost looks like it's folded on the inside Side, yeah. because you can't see the raw edge. So have you hand stitched this one? No, that's done on the same oh, machine. Oh, is it? Yeah, with, that's done on the same machine with a um, you know a monofilament clear thread. Okay, but like a a zigzag. A zigzag. Wow, it does look like it's folded inside. You can't see the raw edge at yeah, all. Yeah, it's weird. Um, so I'm just just going to try and okay. see what if. I'm just going to go for a straight stitch and see what happens. We'll see what goes on with this. It's either going to like it or not. Um, I've got a 2.6, so I might take it down to about a 2.4. So again, if you've got a needle down facility and a yeah, needle down facility and a knee lift, you're gonna be better off if you use it, because it'll give you more flexibility. Let's find that um stiletto. So you just use the end of a here a mark or a stiletto to just hold yeah. the little flaps down. Yeah. So that's what it looks like with the straight stitch. Mine's a little bit wobbly because mm. I'm doing it stood up sideways. Yeah. Should we have a look at what it looks like with a zigzag? Yes. Yeah? She says confidently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Let's do it with a zigzag. It's lovely, isn't it? Like it's just it's like just a little window. It looks a little bit better. It's working fine though, isn't it? Take it nice and slow. Yeah. I presume you can sew it by hand as well. Yes, yeah, absolutely you could. Because you could use like a blanket stitch couldn't you, if you wanted to. Um, oh, that would be nice. It'd be quite pretty, wouldn't it? You could do another cut of thread and do a blanket stitch around the edge. I love the designs like this where, you know, you can sort of see the basic principle and then the possibilities of yeah. making it your own. And if you do one, then the next one you'd think, oh, I'm going to try that. Yeah, it, it really does sort of open up mm. loads of possibilities. Because like the lines of quilting you've got on it as well, you know, you could do those in different colours and, you know, really you can then sort of adapt it to how you want it to be. But it's a beautiful technique. I love it. 
Now, there are lots of different folded patchwork techniques. I think there's quite a variety. I know that years ago, um, Jenny Raymond did loads of, she's, I think she's got a book, hasn't she? Tucks, pleats, something like mm. that. Um, what, and all different sorts of folded? Yes, all different sorts of folded patchwork. Also, this reminds me of, you know, like Tudor, I don't know, Tudor costumes? Yes, yeah. You know, what, in the sleeves? Mm, and they have those little holes, yeah. Yeah. So I wonder why cathedral windows has become so lovely. It's like the technique, isn't it? It's the one you always think of. The one that everyone likes the most. Because that, I mean, in a way, is much more complicated because you've got sort of lots of seams. You're, you know, the, the fold backs are from diff lots of different pieces. So effectively, you're, it's, because it is a form of reverse applique, isn't mm. it? Though it's yeah. folded patchwork, it's reverse applique, and you're quilting it at the same time as you're sewing it in position. Right, so it's folded, reverse <laughs> applique, <laughs> quilt as you go. <laughs> By hand or machine cushion. Yeah, and looks much better in the zigzag on, the, on here than, than it does in the straight stitch. Keep going. I don't know if you... Can you... You want to see what it looks like in the zigzag? I don't know if you can Yeah, can in. you see on that if we get, can we get closer? Or do we need to put it on the table? So yeah. the zigzag looks much better than the, than the actual straight oh, okay. stitch. But it is weird how it does look like it's folded under, not folded over. Yes, it is weird. Mm. sort of just pivoting at the bottom and then going up the other side so I'm not pulling it really hard I'm just pulling it just enough, enough. to put yeah. it over rather than yeah so I'm not yanking it at all it's just like is it easier to do this did you find it easier working with the felt than with the fabric um yes got another message message from Sandy hello Sally and great demonstrations always from not so sunny Cornwall. <laughs> oh, I know. I, was, I read Hi, it first of all, and it said sunny Cornwall. I thought, no, no, it's not very nice out there. Imagine see, it's not quite as cold this morning. It's only about five degrees rather than minus three. <laughs> Keep going. I came up on Friday though, and it was threatening snow. I thought I need to bring a survival kit with me. I had a crochet blanket and a six pack of crisps. I thought, what more do you need in life? If I'm snowed in my car, I've got my crochet blanket and a six pack of crisps. Six pack yeah. of crisps. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, what if I was snowed in and it was all night? I'd need six packs of crisps, wouldn't I? <laughs> <coughs> and to be fair, that was all I could find at home quickly when I thought, what if it, because it was supposed to really snow on Friday and I was worried coming that I was just, what if I'd got stranded? Anyway. Crochet blanket in a six packet of crisps. That's all you need. <laughs> Didn't have a drink. <laughs> oh. Just gone a little bit. So do you have to do all of these? Yep. How are we doing for time? Hmm? How are we doing for time, okay? Um, well, you've got about 20 minutes left, okay. so it depends how much more you need to show us whether you can... Okay, I'll do one more and then I'll start playing around with the centre. Okay. I really like this Liberty fabric, the one that you're doing is um, the one that the bundle that Sally Ann is using is the one that's got the blue aeroplanes. What's that bundle called, Hannah? I can't remember what that one's called. That's the one that Sally Ann's doing now. Sky, Sky Rocket Dance. Uh, 
Uh, the favourite at the moment is the green one. Mm. Very nice though, very traditional. I love that one. I just like this, the sky rockets. I think they're really pretty. Okay, so we've, um, there'll be, there's only about 20, well, less than 20 of the green bundle left. So if you want that one, I would um, put it in your basket and check out because we haven't got so many left of those. But remember, there's enough of fabric, Liberty Fabric in the bundle to do the piping around the edge of the cushion as well. That is optional if you don't fancy doing covered piping, but it does finish it off nicely. But there is enough Liberty Fabric to do that so you get a real matching effect. Beverly says, I always keep a box of good quality oat bars in case I'm stranded anywhere. They fill you up in a brilliant emergency and a bottle of water. Oh, well, I didn't have any of those. I had a six pack of, I had a six pack of crisps and my new, and I just finished my crochet blanket. So um, it was really warm. Yeah, I didn't have a bottle of water. I decided I'd eat the snow. This is my theory. Yeah. <laughs> it was five o'clock in the morning and I suddenly panicked. <laughs> Right. Okay, where have we got to? Um, so, this one was the straight stitch. It looks a little bit wonky, but the zigzag really did seem to set it off the best. Oh, look, we're coming in close. Oop. Oh, yeah. You see, it's a, little yeah. Bit, mm, it's a little bit over the place, whereas the zigzag seems to work a mm. lot better. But, I mean, it's entirely up to you. Or, I mean, you could hand stitch it using... Yeah. I don't know, you could use like a pearl thread, mm. like a yeah, 12. Yeah, you could make a real feature of it, of it yeah. yeah. You could make a real feature of mm. the turn back. And because it's felt, it'd be nice and easy to sew through as well. Right, I've got, I need to ask you a question now. <laughs> <laughs> Did I put another line of stitching inside that one? Because um, I can't remember. One moment. <laughs> yes, you did. Okay, so I'm going to go around now and I'm just going to do a little line of stitching about yeah, just a quarter of an inch. Points. Yeah. Is, is there that the one you're talking no, about? No, I mean, is there another one that goes a little bit further in? No? Uh, yes, there is. Yes, yeah. there are two yeah. lines of stitching. Yeah. Okay, let's pop that one in then. So this is just like a quarter oh, of an it's inch. Just, it's under the flap, so it's not so easy to, to see. see. Yeah. But yeah, so there's the original circle you did, but there's another one beyond that. So... Is that for... Um, so that the points fold back? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that they're not too long? Yeah, like it was hard little... to see because yeah. it's under there. Yeah. Otherwise, oh, I guess, otherwise they would fold right back. That just keeps the points in a bit. Right, I think I've got it in the right position. Yeah, so just a line of straight stitching, a little bit, a quarter of an inch away from the inner circle. Okay, so that's the inner line that just keeps the um, yeah. the points forward. Yeah. So now you can begin to peel them back from the centre. Ah. Have you got um, a glue pen? I, I was going to bring one on with me. Mm. I looked in there and no. I don't know. If there's not one in your box, then not, not that I can see it. Hannah can have a look for one. So you just... You fold them all back. Yeah. 
and this is when the beads come in. Don't worry if you haven't, I can just stitch them back. No worries. So yeah, if you want to be, I mean, you, you don't have to bead it. You can do. But you need uh, to what, stitch it back. But you need to stitch it back if you want to reveal the circle. Yeah, okay, so you could just put a cross on it or you could just do a small slip stitch around the edge or buttons yeah. would be nice. Buttons would be nice. Tiny ones. Yep. You don't want to big fat ones or little beads. Not sure what size these beads oh, are. A question they? from Jenny on an email. Um, so, well, that sounds complicated. Would it be possible to add more windows going outwards? Because she said it would make a nice, like, starburst wall hanging. Yes, it would. Right. But it, you'd have to think about that. You'd make a template in exactly the same way. Do so you just need another circle? Yeah, you need another circle, and then you're going to position your cuts. Right. Yeah, I guess you could. In between, so they're going to be here, aren't they? Mm. That could look really cool. Cool idea. Yeah. You'd have to really think through the maths for that one, though. It's a bit of geometry going on there. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a bit right, you've only got, what, five minutes, ten minutes? Five or ten minutes, okay. So I just wanted to show you just a couple of beads so you can see that it's beginning to come together. Yeah, so we don't sell the beads, but you can use any sort of little beads or buttons or yep. from your stash. Depends what, where you're gonna, what it's for, where you're going to make it. You don't have to add beads, you could just sew it down. It's nice though, it gives quite um, an opulent look, doesn't it? Yes. And I've also seen um, people do it, make it square. So you don't have to make it round, so a square cushion. Oh, okay. See? Yes, so if you didn't want to do the circle, you just do the... But So the same principle then? Exactly the same principle, but you do it in square. Eight. Oh, okay. Just make it a square into a square cushion. I mean, if you don't want to do like the gusset and mm. the rest of it. I yeah. like this though with that because it sort of almost feels it's just a bit more meaty, isn't it? You could make meaty. it into a bit, well, you know, it's a bit more meaty. I don't know whether that's a good thing. You just described my cushion as meaty. meaty. Well, <laughs> meaty as in large. Yeah, it's yeah, substantial, isn't it? It's a substantial cushion because it's got the gusset on it. Okay, right, let's see how far we're going to get with this in. So what you would do, from you'd go all the way around mm -hmm. and sew on your beads, etc. And then I've quilted as well. So yeah. I use like the width of my walking foot to put concentric circles. Right, okay. Radiating. Yeah, no, it looks really nice. I really like that effect. All the way around. And then when you get to, I can actually cut it out for you so you can see. So you would finish putting them in and you'd obviously you'd put a line close to the edge. Mm. Um, I don't know whether to cut around this or not. Give you, an ex <laughs> you can. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's, I like the quilting lines though because it, it really echoes the design in the inside, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. it does. Okay, how am I doing for time? Five minutes. Okay, so I've, I think I really need to talk you through the other bits. Okay. Yeah, so you cut it into a you quilt the outer lines and then you cut it into a circle, circle. and then your cushion top is done. Yes. So then when you get hold of your back mm -hmm. and see so the back has a zip in it. So I've set this up. So, so you if you need a zip, we do have lots of different colours and lengths on the website. And um, there's a cotton wadding in here. So if you want cotton wadding, which um, Sally Ann recommends you use for this, because you don't want it too, too much of a loft, too squishy. It's just to add a little bit of body to it. So again, to make the back, I've got the same layering technique that the interior lining. Ooh. Oh, that's from the other one. Um, some very thin batting and then the wool felt. And I've put the zip in on one side. Right. And then what you would do is, I mean, this is, zip is far too long. I think in the pattern I show you how to do a shorter zip with a filler at either end. Yes, yeah. yeah. You've got a little bit of casing either side yeah. to just fill it in. And that's all in the pattern. That's in the pattern. So you don't need to remember any of that or no. think, oh, I don't know how to do that. That's all in the pattern. So then putting the other side of the zip in, 
mm. what I would do is I personally would tack I all the way along here mm. like machine tack or base you know with a big stitch yeah. to get it and then put this piece on the back which is on the reverse of the okay. zip I don't know can you see where I'm going with this I've joined mm. it a little bit at the top so you're going to end up with that then coming out from there joined like this yeah so you just sew the zip and the um, fabric and the felt right sides together yeah through all the layers of yep. the lining and wadding and folds. Yeah, and then you're going to give it a, a line of top stitching. Yeah. And then be, you've cut, remember you've cut this out, so it's a circle. So you're mm. going to superimpose your front circle on your back. Yeah. And then that And then way, that's your template. Plate, yeah. yeah. Then you know that they're both exactly, identical. Which is really important. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So there's the zip. You can see in this one yep. with the sort of the filler bits on the end. But all the instructions of how to do this are in Sally Ann's instructions, which you will get with your kit. Um, started to, so this is the, the gusset that goes all the way around. And I, in mm. the pattern, I deliberately tell you to cut it very wide and very long because things that are quilted generally change shape and dimension. Right. And it's okay. better to have too much than mm. it is to have too little. And trim it later. And trim it later. Okay. So. And there's enough felt in the bundle to do the gusset Yeah, so felt. I've got just one join in, in the... Okay. The rest of it and this is about 60 I think in the pattern I tell you to cut it about 60 inches yeah, I like long the, um, the horizontal quilting that you've got it looks really nice yeah the horizontal quilting is deliberate because it uh, helps the curve yeah it's interesting yeah, yeah. it helps why? it bend it's like engineering isn't it I guess yes I suppose it is yeah I was thinking why does that help but yeah because it helps the the bend go around yeah but it looks really nice I like that so you need to cut and I tell you how to do this in the pattern cut your gusset so that it fits your um, your circular quilt mm. top and back um, and to do that you need to take into account the seam allowance yeah so you need and it took me a little while to get my head around this that okay. so if you've got a, a, um, a seam allowance that's like half an inch in mm. say either side then that is the diameter yes and you need to use that measurement to help you know pi is it pi d 3.142 yeah 3.142 times diameter it, is the circumference yes so you need to cut it exactly to fit to the circum the diameter of the circle minus the seam allowance. Yes, and that has to be the that circumference is the length of that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you've got a couple of options. You could um, use like a quarter inch, or you could use a half inch. It all depends. Because at this point, you could be putting in the piping. Right. Okay. Okay. So weigh up the options and mm. and how your circles look yeah I see what you mean yeah, yeah it's really sort of personal preference really mm. and then once you've got the two circles and this joined together in a round then you and then there's a picture in the pattern I think that shows you how you use clips yeah to put it into position so depending on whether you're putting the pipe it might sort of alter your seam allowance so th yeah think through that um I don't know if I've got a picture yeah, no, it shows you how you, yeah, it's all there. Yeah, there's it, the piping. So it talks about, all about the piping. So if you don't want to put the piping, you don't have to, but there's enough fabric in your kit to cover the piping. Yes. And then you just make sure that you've got the zip open when you put the back on. Yes. Or you never get it out. <laughs> good point. <laughs> Very good And point. I know that because I've done that before. <laughs> and then, um, so going slightly, ooh, slightly sideways, mm. um, we talked about this. Oh, that's so sweet. So this is the same technique. Um, but baby. But baby. But this is not my pattern. This is a free pattern from Becky Alexander. Do you want to put it on the um, frost? On the, on the overhead. So not the top pattern, that's yours. Yes. But the pattern to make the little So this is exactly, purse. yeah. The same technique. This is... Yeah, we love Becky. We love... Well, Becky's a really good friend and it's her who encouraged me to do these patterns. Oh, that's really that's kind of nice. Her. Anyway, um, yes, it's called the Canteen Pouch. And if you right. look up Becky on YouTube, put in Canteen Pouch, I am sure you can find the pattern. And all I've done is scale down what I've done in the cushion to make the little pouch. Mm. Okay, so you that's just use a smaller... It's just a smaller version. Yeah, it's just a, a smaller version of the same thing. That's so. really pretty. Yeah. Becky's and you could make it a little bit big, bigger and it'd be a shoulder bag. Yes, we talked as well, didn't we, about putting the, the Yeah, this could be a big bag, couldn't it? Yeah, it could be a big bag and you could put a zip in the gusset mm, yeah. rather than in the back. Or slightly smaller. Between the two sides, it'd be like a little shoulder bag, wouldn't it? Oh, God, 
I mean, that would be really cute, wouldn't it? Well, uh, yeah, just a little circle. Yeah, I know. You, I can picture it. Mm. Yeah, it would look great. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, and that's so lovely, isn't it? So when you get this, not only are you getting all the fabric you need to make the cushion, but you're getting a whole new technique with inspiration and ideas. And once you've gone all the way through this and made your cushion, you're like Sally and I and I, you'll be going, ooh, ooh, what else could I make so, with yeah. it? But that was a really good suggestion about doubling it out. I really like that. I might have to try that when I get home. You know, putting another layer. Yes. So but it's yes, sort of, you'd it's almost like starburst. But you'd want the next one here, wouldn't you? And then the... Oh. But you'd it want would it, make you'd, an amazing wall hanging, wouldn't it? Yeah, but it? you'd definitely want it a different colour, wouldn't you? You would, yeah. Well, you'd have to really think about that then, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah have you got a calculator? <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you so much. It's lovely. So when are you back with us? Um, the 25th, I think. Okay. Yeah, 25th. Oh, nice. Well, we look forward to seeing you then, but thank you. That's been brilliant. You've inspired all of us, and as always, I've showed us how to do it really well beautiful design so i'll just have a quick recap of the quilts uh, the kits not even the quilts the kits so this is the green is this called the green bundle the green bundle in it you get a meter of this beautiful like um it's like an olive green liberty fabric you get half a meter of the cream cotton fabric and that's for um backing the wadding on the back of the cushion which is really nice because quite often, you know, you see in kits and it says you need backing. You think, oh, I haven't got any of that. But that comes in your kit. And you get half a meter of this beautiful imperial purple felt. It's very lovely. It's very rich. And um, with the cushion, when, the, when you make yours, the back, the front and the gusset will be made in the felt. And there is enough fabric of this beautiful Liberty to wrap around the binding as well so that you can bind it if you want to. Um, that's the green bundle. Remember, this is our most popular one, so you do need to remember to check out on that one. Um, the next bundle is the pink bundle. Um, again, you get the full instructions, Sally Ann, everything you need to know in there. You get a metre of this beautiful pink Liberty fabric which actually I think is totally different looks depending on which one you try because obviously the same purple felt in all of them. But that's a lovely contrast. That's really pretty. I'm feeling that's very bedroom. But completely different room. So depending on which one you have, it is a completely different look. But I love that combination. It's very pretty. And obviously you get the um, half metre of white, which is just used for the backing and the full instructions. And, and I'm sure there must, is there any of this left over, this Liberty? Yes, quite a lot. Oh, there you go. Leftover Liberty. What's not to love? Always useful. You make Always yourself a headband. Make yourself one at a headband <laughs> like Sally. <laughs> Always useful to have a bit of leftover Liberty. You can use it for all sorts. I never chuck any of mine out, even the tiny scraps. No, EPP. I keep it all. Perfect. And then the final bundle is the blue um, Sky Rockets. Is that what it's called? I can never remember Adventures, Liberty Adventures, the one that's the blue sky rocket. So you get a whole metre of this beautiful, I love this fabric. It's just so nostalgic. I like the Thunderbird aeroplanes oh, and the little lightning strikes, but it's lovely. I mean, I think what's lovely about this is that, if you, that once all the fabric is revealed, you get just a few little rockets here and there, but it's yeah. really pretty. And it does look lovely against the purple. I think because the blue is so soft, it look they look really good together. And obviously you also get the half metre of the cream fabric, which is used for the backing and full instructions. So there we go. Well, thank you so much. That's been great. We, I've, I've learned loads. I'm very, really inspired. I want to have a go now. So um, coming up in just a few moments is tools, but mainly... Um, Applique, applique tools, equipment, books, all sorts of different things. So if you love applique and you want to see some extra little things you can get or you haven't tried it, we've got everything you need. So I will see you soon. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. 
Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Oh, welcome back to, um, well, it's tools, but it's mainly sort of applique hour. Um, and I'm going to start off with the applique scissors, otherwise known as duck build scissors, which we have only just got back in stock. Um, we've had a lot of requests for them because people really like them. I have asked for a bit of fabric, but despite the fact we work on Sewing Street, we can't find any fabric. It's weird. So I'm going to show you in a minute. But let me, if we get a close up on these. These look like the weirdest scissors, don't they? Because you've got one blade. This why they, you can see why they're called duckbill scissors are the name. One blade that's completely flat and rounded and the other blade that's like a normal pair of scissors. Now, the reason that you have these scissors is because you can get in very close up. So the cutting edge, you can get really close up because this flat blade will go underneath. Um, so I need to, right, well, I'm just going to cut this back. So, if you want to get really close up, oh look, Hannah's found me some fabric, saves me cutting that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so, when you're cutting applique pieces, say you've um, you cut you've appliqued a piece of fabric and you want to trim it down, you can get in very very close. 
by cutting like that. So this isn't a blade, this isn't sharp, this just allows you to lie it flat. But, so when you, so if you want to cut right close up to something, you can. But you know when you're all, when you're layering fabric and maybe you're bond webbing different layers and you want to get it close. The other thing it's really, they're really good for is grading a seam allowance. So say you've sewn fabric together and you need to trim it, but you're only cutting off a tiny amount. Because this will lay flat, it just gives you greater accuracy. So say I only want to cut off maybe two or three millimetres. I can do that a lot easier and more accurately because the blade will lie flat. So if you, if you do any kind of fabric layering, applique, or just trimming, I've got them at home and it's amazing actually. And you're looking around and you think, oh, I know, my duck field scissors, perfect for them. Because you can get very close, it's due, it's due to this blade lying down flat, which isn't a blade, it's just, well, it's just the flat edge. They do look really odd. I mean, here they're called precision cut embroidery scissors, which I guess uh, you can use them as well if you want to cut um, embroidery threads very close to the fabric um, and you don't want to pick, you can't pick it up. But you know, if you've got a, some, some stitching and you want to cut it very close, it's really good for that. But this, I mean, basically the the duck bill part, it just protects the fabrics, fabric. So it stops you cutting um, the fabric beneath. So if you think you've got an applique shape on something, rather than cutting the fabric beneath, it's brilliant for reverse applique. So if you've, um, if you've got a piece of fabric underneath and then you sew a fabric on top and you need to cut the shape out, like in Hawaiian applique or any other sorts of reverse applique, this blade here just protects the fabric underneath. It's one of those tools, a bit like the Hera marker, that when you've got, you find that you use it for all sorts of things because nothing else does the same job. Anyway, we've had a lot of requests because we have been out of stock for them for a while. So those are the applique scissors. But you know, there's lots of different things that you'll use grading seams for, whether it's dressmaking, applique, patchwork, all things. But if you need to be able to reduce the bulk in something, perfect. Right, what should we do next, Hannah? <gasps> applique pins. I really like these. These are one of the things that um, I put on my list of things that I like to use. And they are, I love them because they're really... Oh... <laughs> she has got no bucket. Applique pins are brilliant because they're very small. So when you're sewing um, applique pieces on, shall I take them out and then you can see? Let's have an open bucket. If I take them out, we'll pour them all onto the table and then you can see them. So they, the pins, let me show you one of these flower pins which are extremely long to be fair. Look at the length of them. And then I've got one of these magic pins. Okay, see now you can see the applique pins are like half the length. When you're um, pinning tiny little pieces onto and you, you're doing hand applique or whether well, it's machine and you're so T pinning little pieces on you don't want the pins to be extending beyond the pieces because I should keep taking them off or I use them maybe I'm putting um binding something but a small area so say maybe you're binding like with Sally Ann did binding the edges of a needle case and you just want the pins to be able to go around small areas so it's when you're pinning small things and you don't want the pins to stick out they are very small they've got nice big um ends so they're easy to see and easy to get hold of which you need them otherwise you can't pull them out because they're so small but they're also extremely sharp so you get 150 in the box and they're just perfect so I mean they are called applique pins and yes they are used for applique but I use mine for all sorts of things I'm very careful with them because they're very they're very precious um and I've just going to try and get them all back in the box now. I am very careful with them because they're quite precious to me. But, but there was just sometimes when you need to pin something and you don't want lots of pins sticking out. Or maybe if you're binding like the edge of a circle, like say if you're making a fabric bucket or a bag or something, and you don't want all the pins overlapping, 
because they create too much bulk. These are ideal. They're also really good for hemming, like the bottom of jeans, so that the pins don't go too uh, get don't overlap too much. Perfect. So let me put those there. Um, so let's do this book. Which one? This. The Wild, where I've got three lovely books. This is lovely. We've had this book on air before and it was really popular there. It's called Wild Wool and Colourful Cotton Quilts. It's a beautiful book. I mean, it is using wool felt and wool fabric, but you don't have to. When, when you just look at the quilts on the front, they're real, oh, they're just beautiful. They really, you just really want to make one of them. I love the houses on the hill. There's the... The use of colour and pattern and texture is amazing and layering as well. You can create an absolute work of art, but someone else is... I love the image of the birds. So on the 5th, 5th of January, um, we with Emma Bradford, we demonstrated this. So if you saw that or you want to re-watch a demonstration of it, 5th of January, you look on YouTube. But it's lovely because you can... End, you will end up with um, a beautiful, beautiful picture where you haven't had to do all the drawing because I think that's so clever. What I love about this is the use of colour. If you're not very good at choosing colours like me, then it's really nice because someone is giving you the inspiration for it. And it tells you how to make the centre block, how to layer it all up. So it's all really clear, really easy to understand. I mean, I just think that's amazing. Birds of a feather. But, you know, this the size of this, it doesn't really need, it's 42 inches, so it's more of a wall hanging, really. But it is an absolute work of art. And I, I think if I was going to make it, I would just copy these colours. It's not all using wool felt, but the applique is. So the background of here is like a nice red spot cotton. So there's all different sorts. So this is a real sort of scrap bus to go through your fabric scrapbook and use all the, all the different bits of pieces and colours. But it's quite quirky, isn't it? You look at the houses on the hill, they're all sort of wonky houses with wonky windows and it features you know it's very hand stitched where you've got the um blanket stitch around the edges it's just an absolute work of art and it's the sort of thing when you look at yourself you think oh i'd never be able to do that but someone else has done it for you but you know when you look at all these small pieces that would be on here when you've got to pin them all on and then sew them out, these tiny applique pins make such a difference because you can then pin all the way around it and makes it a lot easier to sew because you don't want to have to be removing too many pins that your thread, particularly if you're hand embroidering, you know what it's like, your thread gets caught on pins, so that's when you need short ones. And then the other one, house in the middle, because it's a house in the middle with a cat on. But it's nice, it's really thought through, it's got all the everything you need all the sort of ingredients all the how many different scraps you need and beautiful sort of color illustrations as well as full color photos lovely book so at 16.99 you've got some beautiful projects there and it's got some really good um, embroidery stitch diagrams which are important that it shows you how to do it and there's um information about the author as well erica kaprov really nice but also in the back of the book are the templates so it's not like you've got to take the ones from the scent from here and enlarge them the full size templates are as a tear out piece in the back of the book which i won't tear out but is extremely useful but you know if you didn't want to recreate this completely you've got some great templates here say you want to um you like the idea of a birdhouse but you want to do something different with it you could just take elements of this the, all the bird every template for these are in here so if you wanted just the birds or some wings or some flowers it's all in there that's lovely isn't it close to selling out it is a beautiful beautiful book wild wool and colorful cotton quilts um should we do simple applique now this is nice because this is like for your real beginning if you've not tried applique before you and you want to think where shall i start i don't want to do anything too complicated or you want to do some applique with children there's lots of ch um, children's designs here this is a fantastic book so a lot of these projects are using bonder web but and we which we um, don't don't have in stock don't know where it's gone we've got it on pre on order but there's lots of um lots of these are using fr freezer paper instead so you can do all sorts. So it shows you, look, it's showing you how to do machine applique using black, 
blanket stitch using a zigzag strip, how to do different piecing, how to finish it off, all the different hand stitches. So all of the instructions you need are in there. And then we move on to the projects. I love the needle case. It's um, a free machine embroidered one. I mean, it's really simple. I like the style of the motifs in here are very naive. They've got that real sort of hand-drawn homespun look, which, lo which really makes them look, gives them a real charm. So there's a lovely little needle case and a pincushion, obviously with bobbins on, but isn't it a great way of using up all your scraps? So I never, th you know, when you cut off little bits, never throw them out, even if they're tiny. I always keep um, a big cardboard box full of scraps rather than throw them out. And you, you can use them for all sorts, but that's lovely, isn't it? You know, the tiniest bit for the ends of the bobbins. It's really worth it. And there's a, a nice little pin cushion. I've got a button bag. Aren't they lovely? I like the way that they're not quite circular. So they just sort of, they give them that really hand finished look, but clever that she's dotted them around with real buttons as well. Uh, notebook cover. But this is, but these are great. So, you know, you can use any of the techniques. You could use um, hand embroidery or machine embroidery, put them in. But it's the ideas, I think, sometimes. You need the ideas and the patterns of how to do it. And then you can start making it your own. I think often people are like, oh, I don't think I can draw those. I won't be able to do those, but look, all the templates are in the back. So if you wanted to make the needle case, there's the template for the sewing machine. Just think of all the other things that you could do with that as well. You could use that as an embroidery template. There's the buttons, flowers, cozies, every th all the templates are in here. So you can make a matching pencil case as well. Um, tablet case. But remember, you know, that what's lovely is you're getting not only how to applique and the templates, but you're also getting lots of instructions to make things. So say you want to make a tablet case, but you want to put a sewing machine on the front, but a big one, you could just take the sewing machine in the back here, enlarge it, sew it onto the front of the tablet case. Mm. Or you could use that, you make a sewing machine cover. I love the coffee cosy. Mm, sew machines, cups of tea, you know, whatever you like, whatever's the most important thing to you, really. Um, egg cosies, but, it, you know, you can mix and match all of these. I think it's lovely. I mean, they could just call this quick projects to make because there's lots of, you know, it isn't just how to applique. It does actually tell you how to make the projects. I like the bread basket, but the bread basket would be a brilliant fabric basket as well. So you could put... Um, the sew machine or the buttons or the spools, you could applique that round and then you've got a fabric basket. But, you know, if you were going to another nice gift for somebody, make some homemade jam, put it in this little basket. You could um, get some of this fabric, cover the, cover the jam jar lid. Brilliant gift. You probably get four jar, jars of jam in there. Matching placemat. Jams of jar, jams of jars of jam. Can't even say I love that backing fabric. That's lovely. I like the tea cozy. I'm going to have a look at the template for that tea. I really, really like the template for the teapot. It's like the one that you sort of put on an arga, isn't it? With a massive handle. But you know, all of these templates, so not only are you getting all these project instructions, does it say how many? 25, so you're getting 25 different projects, but you're also getting all the templates Templates that you can use for loads of other things as well. So everything to make that, you can make a whole teapot and tea cozy wall hanging, because they've got um, teacups on the coasters. Really useful way of, they've really shown you how you do fussy cutting. So if you don't know, fussy cutting is where you cut out a motif and fabric, where you position the motif so it's in just the right place. So if you look on this cup here, they've fussy cut it so that the cockatoo is right in the center of the cup and that's fussy cutting and that's where it's really useful to keep all of these small pieces um when i was on last week i thought well, we were talking about light boxes last week now that's this is one of the things i use my light box for is um if i want to do fussy cutting so say i've got a template for a, cup, a teacup or, or whatever and i want to place that particularly on a piece of fabric if you put your fabric on your light box and then you put the template on top um, it will shine through and then you can exact get your um, fabric you can fussy cut it to exactly the right place otherwise you're sort of trying to hold your template against the window but yet another marvelous use for a light box it's a lot of these tools I often say is that once you've got it you realize what else you can do with it but look how much better this coaster looks with the fact that the cockatoo is in the center of it light box perfect for that and as if by magic my light box has just arrived.
da, 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 look at that. So that's what I, so if you put the template down, or you can do it either way because the light will shine through, and then you put the fabric on top, you can then shine that up through and you can get that first attending. It also stops you wasting fabric because you then use, um, so if you, if you did it like this, I mean, luckily you wouldn't, you could just trace, you could just trace the template, or if you're very careful, you can place it like this. There we go. I'll turn the light box on in a minute when we find the cable. Place your fabric on top and then you can trace over, but that's how you get it just in the centre. And without a light box, that's very difficult to do, but it is a much better use of fabric because if you've got small scraps of fabric, then you can take out those small elements. So let's just, there we are, where do we get to? The teacups, nice little cushion, some lovely things. I like the hot water bottle cover with the hearts on, um, but I love the pyjama bag. Isn't that lovely? It's got pyjama tops, but again, just think of all the things you could do with the pyjama um, template. Use that for all sorts of things. It's really lovely. I, I like the fabric, but again, that f I do like that fabric. It'd be really good for fussy cutting as well. I like the makeup bag. It's really pretty, but again, you know, the instructions here are for just a zip bag. So you could use this for all sorts. You could use this zip bag to put maybe the sewing templates on and then you've got something for your sewing room or um, put the pencils on if you wanted a deeper pencil case or just put a row of these flowers across the front. Brilliant gift. There's a lot of value in this book because it's all the instructions for the projects. That's what I love. Coin purse. Glasses case, like the little sunglasses thing. Lots of small, lots of really nice, fun projects. Ideal if you're just starting off sewing. Or if you just want some ideas, you know, you think, well, I've got lots of fat quarters or I've got lots of scraps of fabric and I don't know what to do with them. There are so many ideas here of everything you can do with them. Tulip picture, that's pretty. I like that on that lovely calico. Anyway, there's loads in here. Oh, look, they've got cacti as well. That would be nice on the zip purse. I know you could put them on a notice board, but that's what I would use them for. And finally, we've got a doorstop with a beach hat on. So that's lovely. So um, I would recommend for applique and fussy cutting a light box. That is really good. Um, shall we do the final book, which is so cute, quilts and gifts? This one, we've shown this book before, but I just wanted to sh cover it again. 30 bags, quilts and accessories to stitch, applique and embroider. Um, Brilliant thing about this book is all the templates are in the back. Something I often do when I look at new books, I often get the, um, go through the back and say, has it got the templates for I got to enlarge these? And it's really nice when you find it does them. Again, in the same way as the Simple Applique book, this is a brilliant book to give you some inspiration about what to do with all my fabric stash, because this uses little, little pieces. It's got, you know, tiny pieces for applique and patchwork and all sorts. Should I just plug the light box in? I love the strawberries. So honestly, with these two books, you'd have all sorts of things. So let me show you. Now I've got my light box back. Thank you very much, Elliot, for sorting out my technical difficulties. Now, this one is an A3 light box. Got to find the templates in the back of my thing now, so I'm just going to show you how it works. I oh, I like an A3 one because it just gives you a bit of extra space. So, let me just give you some price comparisons for our light box because, honestly, I did say the other week how great they are. So, this one is, ours is $49.99. Look at that one on the web. Uh, that's an A3, which is the same size as mine. 123, 123 instead of 49.99. I'm going to turn mine round actually. No, I've got it on the wrong side. I won't turn it round. No, it is dimmable. That's what it means. That one is dimmable and so is ours. And what is brilliant about it is that you, see if I press it once and it gets brighter and then it gets brighter and then it turns off, is that depending on the um, how dark the fabric is. You need different light settings. There's not to do with the light outside. So let me show you. So say I decide I want to, well, we were talking about the coffee cup, weren't we? I don't even need to cut the book out. I place the coffee cup on there, get a small piece of fabric, like here. 
you can do it either way around because they'll shine through. So say I think, right, I really like this fabric. I like that floral and I want that in the middle of my coffee cup. So you take the coat, the cup, you place it over the fabric. Now I can start moving that round and think, right, that is right in the centre now. And then I can trace it. So you could do it either way. If you, in fact, if you do it this way, it's even better. Then that will shine through. Now, depending on the brightness and the, it's the, sometimes the darker fabrics need it slightly lighter, bizarrely. But then you can trace through. Now, the only other way to do that, if you don't have a light box, is you've got to hold it up like this, and you've got to hold it up to the window to see the light shining through. Or you've got to trace that onto tracing paper and then put it on that. But it's just really quick. So sometimes you think, oh, you know, I'll just cut it out. But just a little bit of time to place the fabric over the template, then you can easily see where the pattern is and draw around it. Perfect. It's wonderful. Oh, Hannah's got two more price comparisons just to prove to you how what an amazing value it is. So ours is $49.99. This one, $89.95. And and that is, you know, it is, it's an A3 light box. It's extremely light. It's a very lightweight perspex, not glass. It's really, I mine just lives down, just like leans against the wall, sort of just between the, um, my chair and that. And they all come with a plug, so plug in, it's not batteries or anything like that. They didn't plug into the computer. Argos, no, not the same brand, but they do the same thing. Three light settings and off. It's got measurements. It's got um, metric down one side, imperial on the other. It is one of those things that um, I treated myself to about a year ago and then thought, why didn't I have one early? Honestly, the number of times, particularly because I do a lot of embroidery as well, that I would tape a pattern to the window and then tape the fabric to it and wave at my neighbours. And they think, what are you doing? But I think this is really good value. When I bought mine, it would cost more than that. And I love it and I use it all the time. And it turns on and off without you even trying. <laughs> so you do that. Let me just move that out of the way. Okay. We, yeah, we haven't had them very long. We have less than 10 left. Obviously, we, I mean, we are trying to get them back in, but obviously I think everyone's realised how wonderful they are. Um, so that was, we were on So Cute Quilts and Gifts. Now, again, this is a brilliant book for own, not only ideas of how to make things, but also lots of templates. I love, I love this one, patchwork with a bit of embroidery. There's a lot of mixed media going on here. You've got a lot of patchwork mixed with embroidery, mixed with applique, construction, um, how to make bags, how to put purse clasps in. I love that bag. And that bag's brilliant, isn't it? It's like a little dress. I love that, the best dress bag. The What's charming about this book is all the illustrations are hand-drawn as well. It's so pretty, isn't it? But it really is a scrap-busting book. You know, this, um, this purse uses loads of different fabrics. I love these strawberries. <gasps> Oh, I think this might be my favourite project. I would really like those. Can you imagine wearing that, a little strawberry corsage? I'm going to make one of those. I might have to pinch the book and then I can wear it. Oh, that's so lovely, isn't it? But you such a little fabric, but it really gives you a really good idea. You could, you know, wear it there or you could pin it to a bag. But lovely little illustrations of how to do it. This is an absolutely charming book. Grapes. Oh, I don't know whether I want grapes or strawberries now. But then there's even bigger things. So you can make this beautiful quilt. That's all, um, all the, the board around there is all hand appliqued as well. And EPP in the centre. That's a real work of art. I love this book. Ooh, and just look at that picture. <gasps> That's the little dresses like the bag into a quilt. Beautiful for a bedroom. But you know, wouldn't that be a lovely thing to make somebody if you had fabric from your sort of bridesmaids dresses and you made that into a quilt? I love the Sunbonnet Sue mini quilt. That's really charm. Very nostalgic. I think this just the, there's a lot of ideas in here and little takes on things that I've not really seen before. Even down to, if you look closely at this, you know, we often do drawstrings. 
And what we normally do is just tie the ends of the drawstring in a knot. But look at this. They just put a tiny little tul piece of fabric around the end so it looks like little tulips. You know, it's those little finishing touches that really give that quirky, professional look. You'll learn a lot from this book. And all the um, templates are in it. Really liking that. I want to make the strawberries. Yeah, definitely want to make the strawberries. Right. <laughs> Don't forget to check out on your light box because we've only got a few left of those and they are perfect for fussy cutting. Right. Um, talking about fantastic values, since we told you about the light box, should we just very, very quickly, because this is limited, as Hannah's just told me, the early bird, £30 saving, which we think is our best saving ever on an early bird best one that Hannah and I have seen anyway so we think it is six boxes you get all really good quality all stackable I love the way they have this really good strong thick elastic you could even use it as handles take the lid off so in the large storage box you've got three separate compartments which would be ideal for all sorts of haberdashery you could even roll fat quarters in there you could keep glue pens you could put them in the bathroom and keep toiletries in them um cotton buds cotton wool balls it doesn't have to be for your sewing but obviously that's a nice thing they i like the way that they're clear and they've got these lovely smoke perspex lids and quite clever that they've thought this through because it's stackable that the sides and the bottom are slightly recessed so that the elastic sits within them. That means they've really thought about it. You then get this medium sized box. Again, you could store all sorts of different haberdasheries in here. Zips, buttons, buckles, um, ribbons, poppers, you know, all of those sort of odd one metre lengths of lace that you have, you don't know where to put. Jewellery making, you could put your pliers, put some of the smaller tools in there. And then you've got a medium sized box and a tiny box. So, you know, for tiny buttons, or you could put all your bag making accessories in there. But, you know, any crafts that you do, say you do card making or jewellery making or anything like that, you can use these for all those different things. If you're into beading, you could put a lot of the seed beads in here or the tubes of beads in the bigger ones. So lots of us, well, I know I do, do lots of different crafts. So, I mean, to be honest, earlier when we started put these on the early bird, there were a lot of you who were multi-buying. Because the storage is stackable, you can... You can vertically stack, which means you can really store a lot of stuff. When you think, I know my saying, when you, you have sort of areas where there's just bags and bags of bits and pieces and you can sort it all out, put it all here. You can see it at a glance. It stops you wasting money as well because then you go out and buy things. You think, oh, I don't think I've got any pur purple zips led or left or any hook and loop fasteners. Well, you can see them immediately. This one you can use as a storage box, but it's actually multi-use as a pin cushion because it has this foam interior which you can put your pins in um, so the pins will just stick in there you can put them in or you can take it out you don't need to have it in there but it's quite high the top of it so if you wanted to store um, needles and things in there as well you can it's quite a lot though isn't it I mean it's quite just in case you didn't know how our postage works it's only one pmp per day which is 3.95 and that's it doesn't matter what you buy so even though you buy this and this is going to be required it's quite bulky it's going to require quite a bit of packaging it's still only 3.95 it doesn't matter how many things you buy whether you buy 10 packs of this it's still only 3.95 and then the final one is for thread well it doesn't have to be for thread it works well with thread So this has got compartments in it. Now, we found that these fit these Aurifil, Aurifil threads perfectly. And what's great is that at the end, there's a little space. So you could put the bobbins in here that match them. You could use any kind of thread, um, sewing threads, but it would also be ideal for embroidery threads. Say you're using metallic in, stranded or um, any of those kind of silk or special threads that get tangled easily. This is the perfect length to lay them in. So you could use them for those. If you're into um, crochet, perfect for crochet hooks, you can get them all. All of my crochet hooks sit in a pencil case and I have to delve through it all. But 
But I could have them all in here, couldn't I? So I think I do need this storage. It's a good time, isn't it, January? Good time to get your, get your sewing. Or if you haven't got a, a big sewing area, you haven't got a sewing room, you've only got a small corner, it doesn't matter, does it? You could have all of this in. Your tatting. Think of all the thread. Were you tatting? You remember when we had um, Barbara on the other week, in fact, on the Iron Lane to do tatting? In fact, she's coming back in a few weeks' time to do it again, which is quite exciting. You could use that. You could put all your tatting in one of those because it is tiny, isn't it? Anything where you're using small tools. Anyway, so that is the early bird of today. And you save £30. Don't forget that. You save £30. Right, there are only four light boxes left. So if you want one, do get one. And honestly, like me, you'll wonder what you do without it. I'm, I was redrawing a template yesterday. I'm doing a new, um, trying to work out a new design. And I thought, oh, run out of tracing paper. But I thought, oh, my light box, don't need tracing paper. You can trace things, you can draw things, enlarge it. It's just brilliant. Um, what shall we do next then? Freezer paper. Now, Sally, I was talking about freezer paper earlier. This is brilliant for applique. So in America, it's used um, really for freezing things. We don't use it for that. They do use it for craft as well. One side is um, got a finish on it. And we did ask, it's actually, I mean, I like it says on here, great for freezing meat. Great for freezing meat. Nothing else. But it's per we don't use it, it's perfect for craft. So one side is plastic coated. So you can draw on the other side, you can press this onto fabric and it sticks, but it doesn't stick in a sticky way. So it doesn't, no, it doesn't stick, it just stays. Because when you peel it off, it doesn't leave any residue at all. It comes off quite easily and you can use it more than once. I mean, to be honest, on the packaging, it does say to use for arts and crafts quilt every day and everywhere. Um, really good for as a quilting template. So say you want to um, quilt an image or s on some on a fabric, but you don't want to transfer it. You can just cut the shape out here, press it onto the fabric, sew around the edge, and then peel it away, and it's done. You can use it for um, brilliant for EPP. Cut out your hexagons in here, and um, then you just press them to the back of the fabric, press the fabric, you know, tack it over, and then it it stays in place. But I was thinking, you know, six forty nine, and in here, yeah, it's fifteen inches wide, and you get yeah thirteen yards, twelve meters, so thirty eight centimeters wide and twelve meters long. So that's quite a lot. Or you can use it for freezing things, but really for applique, it is brilliant because it's probably the only thing that you can attach to something and will stay in place. Not permanently, obviously. It's just for when you're sewing, but it will peel off and leave no residue. I always have a roll of this and a roll of Bonder web. Got to have that. We haven't got that at the moment. But a roll of freeze paper, a roll of Bonder web. Perfect. Um, so on the 5th of January, when we had Emma Bradford in, who was doing the um, wild, the wild wool and colourful cotton quilts book, she showed, demonstrated how to use the freezer paper as well. But, you know, it, it is just one of those materials that is just like bonder web and interfacing. Really useful. You can use for lots of things, but a roll of it is really good. So, panels. Now, if you want to do applique, now I remember I said one of the greatest things about applique, um, one of the best things about applique is that you can personalise things. So you can make somebody something or you can buy something. Say you want to make, you know, a baby blanket for somebody. You could buy a pre-made blanket, a fleece blanket, and then you can just applique their names on. And the perfect thing about this is I, if you press bond web to the back, cut round the letters, you can just applique on them on. Every letter has got one uppercase and two lowercase. And you don't have to think about it, you don't have to think about sizes and whether you've got the right thing, but you've got so many different letters. And the idea, so this colour is traditional. But the idea behind it is that is that you mix and match the letters. You're not supposed to have all the letters in the same. Oh, and it has numbers as well. But this is my favourite one because 
because this is um, grey, I think this will look lovely on colours. So say say you are really getting organised in your sewing room and you make some fabric story, storage tubs, you could label them with these. Just really quick, or I think the grey works really well with new baby things. So say you bought, you wanted to make a baby blanket, the grey would look beautiful on it, wouldn't it? But it works well on really bright colours as well. Or you just, you know, when you start going around your house with this, before you know it, you'll have labelled everything that's fabric. Tea towel, tea cosy, cushion. It has all the numbers as well. So you get your one uppercase and two lowercase, although some of them... T has got three lowercase as as a Z. So obviously the more commonly used letters have more lowercase. So like O's got three, T's got three, whereas V's only got one. But you could also embroider on top of them as well, couldn't you? And when you'd used some of them, you could even use this to trace around. And you could trace around them using your light box and your own fabric and you've got them. But it's just a really, it's, I like the fact that there's, they're all curved. They're curved and rounded and appealing. And I do like, yeah, really nice font. But you can use them to personalise so many things. And what are they? Oh, 5 99 and you get loads. So you get at least three of each letter and, and then you mix and match them. So they are great for labelling things. Things like um, pee bags for school. You could label that, or if you've got a little one going to nursery and they have to take a spare clothes bag, they'd be ideal for that. So the um, the other colourway, is that one sold out now, Hannah? Right, traditional is about to sell out. There's a little bit more of grey, but not much. So if you do want this, then you need to check out. I like that they're just... It's a, it just it's just a really quick way, you know. I think sometimes it puts you off doing sort of a plique and personalising things because it takes a while and you've got to choose all the colours. But this is just makes it really easy. It's a bit like having a panel of quilt labels. Really useful thing to just have in your sewing room so that you can personalise things and add to them. It's just a, a really useful that, but perfect for a plique personalisation. Gosh, that's a lot of peas. Yes, you could just like put sewing room. Don't come in keep out so what should we do next <gasps> we've got some amazing orophil we've got which one is that this one this one this one is the only way to wait the calm collection now i like these i like these because they've got nice spools oh this one's not open We'll open this one then. So most thread that you use for sewing, like every day's sewing and seams and hems and stuff, is a 50 weight, which is middle of the road thread. But they're just the normal th thread that you would use for most hand sewing and machine sewing and seams and things. This is an 80 weight. Now the f higher the number, the finer the thread. So this, if you want to do... Um, for hand sewing, I think it's better to use a finer thread because um, it shows up less. If you're sewing on lighter weight fabrics like um, a chiffon or an organza or cotton lawn, the finer thread is better. If you're sewing seams, I mean, it's just as strong as a 50 weight. If you're sewing seams and you really don't want them to show up and you want it to blend, which is why these are in the neutral colours, then an 80 weight works better. Um, things like sewing on beads or sewing on sequins or small buttons, you want the finer thread. But what I like about this is that in this collection, they're very special, they're cherry wood. So I'd be like, let, I need to get through these spools because when I finish them, you're not going to be throwing these out. These will look lovely. You can wrap some ribbon around them and you can use them as display because they're beautiful. Hang them on your Christmas tree next year. They're 100% calm, but what's great is if you've not used the 80 weight thread before, they give, they're give they available in this calm collection, so in some nice neutral tones. Once you've used it, you'll realise maybe you're sewing on small buttons. Using an 80 weight thread is better because the thread isn't so bulky, which means you can get more stitches because there's only so many there's only so many stitches you can get on um, through a buttonhole, so you can get more on. Things like um, needle turn applique are perfect for particularly I would use this when doing EPP because if you're doing lots and lots of over sewing stitches 
Um, and because they're in the neutral colours, that means they'll go even with the brights. The stitches won't show up as much. So I tend to use, well, I, I always use Orifil when I'm doing EPP because it needs to be quite strong. The 80 weight thread is better for that. So you get 274 metres on each of the spools. And, yeah, so Orifil say that you can use the 80 th weight thread. Let's see if I'm right now. For English paper piecing, yes. Hand applique, yes. Machine embroidery, well, yeah, I guess if you want to embroider, you know, because this isn't just a hand sewn thread. You can put it in your machine and do embroidery. So, But if you want machine embroidery that's just a little bit more subtle and doesn't stand out too much, or if you're doing free machine embroidery and you're doing lots of, um, when you go around a so a shape and you do it three or four times, you don't want it to show up too much, but you want it to stay in place. The 80 weight thread will just add texture without too much bulk. And machine applique as well. Very good for, for a nice um, zigzag stitch. Really good for free motion quilting. And free motion couching. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's if, if you've got a thicker thread and you want to sew it on top of another thread. So it's nice that this 80 weight is in the sort of the neutral colour box. Because if you've not used it before, this will go with lots of things. You know, when you're doing applique or embroidery onto bright fabrics, then the neutral colours often work really well. And it's Orofil, so you know it's going to be good quality. And it will be nice and strong, because they use um, Egyptian long staple cotton for it. Very nice. The, perf the perfect little box of neutrals. Again, we're on Orofil. This is 50 weight, so this is your general standard all-purpose thread, as in it, it's for use for general seaming. It's the normal weight. I like this because, it, again, it's your neutrals. And I, mean, I do love the bright ones, obviously, very, very important. But I always love to have a good stock of neutrals. But quite often, your, the neutrals that you have are white and black and maybe grey. And you forget, don't you? I mean, if you're... The way... Well, this, is, this box is designed by Pat Sloan, who is an extremely experienced quilter so the colour that Tula uses who's done design a lot of Orofil um, is grey but I like the neutrals that are in here because there are neutrals that you wouldn't think of there's the sort of the deep petrol blue that is a real neutral that will go with like the navies and any of the blues you've got light grey dark grey khaki is a brilliant neutral I use that a lot for bright fabrics. It just doesn't really show up. It doesn't show up on green. It doesn't show up on browns, but it just sort of fits with lots of different colours. So if you want to do um, any piecing or quilting that you don't want it to show up or hand sewing like EPP, there is every colour that you will need in here. So you get 10 spools, 10 spools, 220 yards on each spool for only 33.99. They are honestly all the neutral you ever need. And the fact that you know they've been um, selected by Pat Sloan, you know, she is such an expert quilter. If she says that these are all the neutrals you'll ever need, then she's right. If you if you love your quilting, you will have heard of her. She's a fan, fantastic designer. Right, try and get them all back in the box. And next, we are going to this one. So we've got more Orofil but different colours this time. If you haven't bought Orofil before and you don't want to commit to a great big box but you want a bit of colour, this is a really nice collection. Oh, is this box been opened before? Okay. Well, it's a shame. Oh, never mind. I, want, I can't, I need to open it so I can see what's in it. So, this has been chosen, it's floral colours, it's beautiful, but really soft floral colours. So, if you've not used Aurifil before and you just want to have a go and see what colours, it is really, um, it's the Hoffman, so it comes from the Hoffman fabrics, but it is very floral, isn't it? So, you've got, ooh, that way, you've got the deep red, peach, yellow, um, a mint green and a real sort of deep tealy bluey green. 
but very floral. So for any of your sewing where you are sewing on floral fabrics, moving into the spring and the summer now, this is a perfect colour palette. You get, it's a 50 weight thread, you get five small spools, 220 yards on each spool. But it's a lovely selection of colours. I think that's one of the great things about Aurifil. Not only is it great quality thread, but it's the colour choices as well. They off, they use, they ask lots of different designers and fabric companies to select their own ranges because then they know that they're going with fabrics that are um, up and coming and that people are using. So I love that colour selection. So $17.99 for some real lovely floral colours. I think, you know, for less than £20 for Aurifil, and if, you, if you've used it, then you'll know how wonderful it is. If you haven't, then, you know, it really is worth investing in just a small box. Give it a go. You will notice a difference with your piecing. I mean, when I first started working for Sewing Quarter, which is when I first met all the quilters, I'd never used Aurifil. I just bought, you know, as long as it was the right colour, I didn't really care what the thread was. And then someone said, oh, you need to try Aurifil, and I did, and it's made such a difference. I mean, I'm quite mean with it. I save it for my quilting. I save it for my top stitching. But occasionally, I, um, I do use it for my piecing, and it is so much better. It doesn't bobble in the machine needle. And it just sort of sits within the fabric rather than on top of it. It blends in with it. So the beautiful colours, you know, I, now I, I used to always do um, binding or quilting in the same colour. I don't know. I use my um, Aurifil threads because they don't stand out massively. They just add that really extra sheen of colour. But I was sceptical, a bit like the bias binding maker. Sceptical that it was worth it. But honestly, they are marvellous. Right, that's all of those three. I've got a little Tula Aurifil. And then we've got exactly the same colourways in big. So should we start small? I love these because they're variegated. Now, I wouldn't use these for just normal piecing. You can if you've got a fabric that's variegated because it will sort of blend in with it. But because they're variegated and beautiful, then if you're um, doing some machine sewing, you will get the effect. So say I would use this... Maybe I'd made um, a bag, you turn it right sides out, like my face mask, top stitch around the edge, I'd use this for it. Because then you get a slightly different look all the way around. I'd also use it for machine embroidery, because you can, maybe you are machine embroidering a leaf. If you use the green, suddenly your leaf becomes all different colours without you really thinking about it. But you know with... Um, yeah, you know, things like Sally Ann's needle case that she just did. These using threads like this, they just work really well because it looks like you're being really arty and you sort of change colour, but you haven't. It's a bit like using variegated um, knitting yarn, isn't it? You know, as you knit a jumper and it changes colour as you go without having to think about it. But this does it with thread as well. So in this box, you've got ten spools, and they're fifty weight each, and there's two hundred and twenty yards per per spool. And you've got pink. Brown, red, light green, mint green. To this is my favourite one. This one here, because this really is multi. You've got pink, blue, white, cream, all sorts of colour in that. Isn't that lovely? So that just adds a bit of extra special. So if you've used Aurifil before, this is a great collection. Now, if you like that, you're going to love this, and it comes in a nice plastic box as well. Same colours. But bigger spools. 1,300 metres on each one. I mean, that's just going to last you forever. But what's nice in here as well, you've got a plain grey. And plain grey is brilliant for just all sorts of piecing. You can piece anything with a plain grey. And there's also a plain sort of, kind of a grey grey green colour again one of those multi-purpose piecing threads so you've got two multi-purpose piecing threads and then all these beautiful variegated colours real treat that's a real treat because it's just one of those things that you think oh oh i just want to top stitch i know i'm going to use my variegated thread don't waste it save it for nice things but that is a lovely thing i would quite like that so Let's see what's coming up. Gosh, it's 5 to 12. Where did the day go? So tomorrow on Sewing Street at 8 o'clock, Fabulous Fabrics. Oh, we've got Barley Hand-Dyed Batik. Oh, I love that. That's nice. 
very completely brand new collection. If you like batik fabrics, you're going to love that. Nine o'clock, we've got Yvonne back. Oh, I love Yvonne. She was just fun fantastic design she is starting her beginners so along we've been talking about this for a while nine o'clock tomorrow is when it starts have you got your kit mm. you need it i haven't got it no you need it because tomorrow is yvonne's beginners so along 10 o'clock we've got sewing room tools lots more to inspire and excite you 11 o'clock yvonne's back with her helen bag and at 12 o'clock it's kits revisited but do not go anywhere because today is Yarn Lane Day and I am really excited about this. Um, we've got a brand new guest in today, Emma from In The Wool Shed. Now, she was recommended to me by so by uh, Mark Francis, who we love on Sewing Street, was a contestant on Sewing Beat. And Emma's one of his neighbours and he said, if you go doing Yarn Lane, you've got to get Emma on. She creates beautiful naturally dyed yarns and she writes her own patterns and she makes her own kits and her company is called in the wool shed because she lives in the wool shed just doing natural dyeing you are going to love this so if you're watching me on the tv just stay where you are well you can have a couple of minutes to make a cup of tea but other than that stay where you are or if you're watching on the web or facebook you need to go on to www.yarnlane.com and that's where you buy from you can't buy from us on sewingstreet.com same channel but if you want to buy you need to go on to yarnlane.com now or you can watch us on facebook it works in exactly the same way as sewing street if you click on watch live all the products will be listed below um, we have a different call center number that's listed on the yarnlane.com but the brilliant thing is is that we share a warehouse so we're allowed to share postage so if you've already bought something on sewing street you've paid your 3.95 postage anything that you now buy on yarn lane and for the rest of the day because in the same way as sewing street we have loads of products we have yarn kits needles hooks accessories everything you need so for mainly knitting and crochet but other yarn crafts as well like looms and needle punching all sorts um all on yarn lane but you are really going to love this her, um, emma is absolutely fascinating you know her whole remit is about using british yarn and dyeing it herself using natural natural yarns. and so i'm really excited anyway she has promised me she's going to bring in some of her dyes and talk us through how she does it but She's got um, a few kits for us that have got the pattern and the yarn and everything. And she'll show you how to make them. And, um, and Mark, I hope you're watching, seeing as you've recommended her, because I'm really looking forward to it. So go and get yourself a cup of tea. I'm going to go and get an Emma. Move all the stuff around. Move over onto yarnlane.com to do your shopping. And I will see you back here in a few minutes' time. 